I'm loading. I'm having trouble. <laughs> That's awesome, Jason. Holy Thank shit. Thank you. Hello, Hi. everybody. Welcome to session 39 of Weird and Wild. Progeny. I wonder why it's titled that. I, I have no idea personally. Who could guess? I'm I'm Jason the DM. I run the game for my fun players. Who else is with me tonight? Hello, everybody. I'm Bailey. I play the fabulous Glossé Allure. Eidolon! Uh, uh, what am I? Um, uh, oh, Bard! College of Glamour Bard, of course. Uh, I am. I'm Luke. I'm playing uh, Aesop, Kinku, Bloodhunter, Order of the Lycan, and his alter ego, Subject 22. What's up? My name is Kevin. I play. Sun Kong, your intrepid Bionoid Apling Monk following the way of the Abundant Spirit. My name's Slim. I'm uh, Rinkes, Lizard Folk, Fighter, Gunslinger, Bounty Hunter, Procurer of Alcohol, and uh, Imbiter of, well, Alcohol. Hi everybody, my name's Nick. I play in VD, the Half-Elf Celestial Warlock, Pack the Tome, with the great pseudo-dragon familiar of all time, Jira. Oh, he's a different color! He changed I, I was colors. wondering that too! I, I didn't know if it was just me. It was ever I since said. he cast for Vivify. It's just you, Kevin. You're fucking crazy! <laughs> <laughs> what? I just need to hit in VD again, that's why. Yeah, hit him. <laughs> you're just gonna be like, I just need another hit. <laughs> Sweet crack. Let's Call see. That Call that an attack. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for whoa, for some reason you've joined us this night. I don't know if there's more people jumping on Twitch on Friday nights. We move nights. We used to be on the holy day Sunday, right after church. We play some D and D, but <laughs> now we are on the sinful Friday night. So we'll see how this goes. You're welcome to follow us. You build up points, loyalty points as you watch. You can look at all those details on our Twitch page. Um, if you do follow us, we'd love to give you a shout out. But, you know, if I can fit it in mid session, we'll do it. But I usually like to hold it to the end of the session. Also, if you guys follow us, you'll get some extra loyalty points. I even gave some folks the other night when I was playing a little bit of that Pokemon Insurgent some points just for the hell of it. So, follow us. In the meantime, before we jump into this session, why don't we not roll some dice yet? Why don't we have you guys draw some inspiration? Yay! Oh, shit! Give me that shit! What is this one? Dragon Salt. Oh, that's pretty cool. You guys can trade inspiration if you feel the need to. Otherwise, just let me know when you're ready to keep rolling on. I feel like I haven't got like a dud inspiration in a really long time. That's good. I got a dud one, but I'm keeping it because it works for me. I mean, worst case scenario, we just use it it's for inspiration. inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget, it can also be used for your followers if they need inspiration. Him, him, I'm a lone him. wolf. I walk giant, alone. Giant skin. Plus one armor and plus one on con saves for a minute. Giant Ooh, skin. Neat. That's nasty. <clears throat> Let's see here. Okay, you guys have drawn those cards. Very good. Next up, I'm going to need everyone to roll a d20 except for... Glossé? That's right, boy. Oh, oh my... Ah! <laughs> uh, Surprise! Surprise! Uh, I, I was like, is it finally happening? Am I finally giving the recap? No, of course not. And Vidi could not. crit fail. Glossé? Oh, it took her but risk. I was... I it need, took her I risk. Need, I needed to roll, Jason. I needed okay. to roll. Okay. No, she saw that Sun Kong rolled a two. So yeah. she was like, uh, That's still risky. 
I mean, it could have been like last week. Yeah. I felt the earth. Sun Kong. What happened last time on Weird and Wild? <laughs> last time, our fearless warriors uh, landed upon the moon Scourge. Um, a pretty miserable planet. Um, this place sucks. Covered in, like, poison almost, it seems like. Not bad poison, luckily. But, uh, it was pretty miserable. Uh, so we were traveling, trying to find, um, Hush, who is here, who got here before us. Uh, we heard from, what's his face? Inoki told us, you know, she landed and went, tried to find the vill the hut, I believe, or, yeah, down the scar. And, uh, so we, we traveled a bit. We saw some huts and some weird-looking, disgusting cattle who were being attacked by this, like, also equally disgusting pig monster with tentacles. Made quick work of them. Um, met two people who live there. Um, we found out that they are escaped slaves from the city beneath the scar. Um, the... We hid with them when slavers actually came to the surface looking for more people to enslave. We had decided we were going to save them as well as find Hush, so we traveled down it into the scar with the young boy and girl, Nezel, and I don't remember the girl's name. Gezma. They were Gezma, and they were going to show us the way down and why we were going down. We were doing good until everyone failed a stealth check and ran into two. Umber Hulks. Two! Oh, uh, God. Uh, one of the Umber Hulks charmed or did something to Sun Kong, myself, and caused me to attack in VD for one turn, which was horrible. But we overcame the Umber Hulks, but Nezel nearly died, was pretty much cut in half almost by one of the Umber Hulks, but luckily, our glowing, wonderful golden boy in VD and his glorious dragon had revivify and brought him back to life yes that's a very succinct recap thank you Sun yeah, Kong. that was good you find Actually, we a, that, but... a, a weird bit in your pockets <laughs> i flip it on over to uh Asa. 37 in vd you also notice after casting revivify the jira your draconic familiar has a lighter sheen to its scales. It has a <laughs> silvery, almost white body with an effervescent glow to it, and seems slightly larger than it was before. Is he alright? <laughs> he didn't, like, eat part of his soul, did he? It's a really, really good question. Everyone oh, make man. a wisdom check, please. Or a wisdom just... saving throw. Oh, fuck! Oh. Oh. Are we fighting Jira, Jason? You son of a bitch! You better not make us do that. Um, uh, clarification: Does my wisdom save advantage from way back when I used the meditation pool about five months ago <laughs> persist? Because <laughs> I haven't had a wisdom check since. Uh, True. Yes. I would have used it before we yeah. landed. Also, I think so. I, I drank in that pool. Yeah, you did. Y'all motherfuckers trying to retcon shit that you forgot to do <laughs> no, before I have we it on, I have it written on my sheet from when we went into the uh, the old god temple that I had advantage on wisdom save and I haven't had a wisdom check. If yes, next time you make a wisdom check, if it's been that long, then yes, it would it would kick in now. I'll just say also for everyone else, you guys do also occasionally get other benefits. I think Sun Kong last time you decided to rest in that room. You got a benefit, but I, I don't think it was something that you could use. True. Uh, which okay. yeah, may sometimes right. be the case. So take my first roll, so five. Eight. Fuck. <laughs> I, uh, I rolled a natural two, and the advantage is going to cancel a disadvantage from my head injury. Um, Man, great start, everyone. I got an 18. What's I rolled your, a 13. Well, What's your 12. total, Invini? Uh, it's gonna be two. I have zero on my wisdom. Oh fuck. Okay. And I and my head is completely mangled from that thing. 
It makes sense. You and Sun Kong remember that there was some type of shuffle recently. Although you're not sure, you're you're kind of just... It's strange. It's almost like a strange sense of deja vu as you're trekking down this descending tunnel. You're sort of following the lead, keeping the young Nezel and, and slightly older Gezma along with you guys to lead you down this tunnel that's sort of like a opposite or a, a separate pathway that leads into the uh, a back door into Scourge. As you are turning looking around you're surprised to see your familiar Jir with a different tone to its scales and then both of you, you as well as Sun Kong, almost jump seeing the large corpses of the insect-like umber hulks nearby. You don't remember fighting them. What? Wait, wait a second. Where are these? Are these umber hulks? Are, are you serious? Uh, is he serious? What? We just fought them. You just, you just, it took them down. Did, did, did we? So Kong, did you hit your head? No offense, Vidi. I mean, I don't think so, but I'm really foggy all of a sudden. Uh, mm. Aesop, can you take a look at the monkey boy? I suppose I could. Uh, I'll, I'll do a quick medicine check, I suppose. Sure. That's a four. Oh, no, it begins again. I begin the session with 17s and 18s on skill checks and end the session with twos in combat. Don't you say that. <laughs> It begins again. I just, I'm just preparing myself. That's going to be a 23 on medicine. That's a pretty good check. As you take a look at Sun Kong, there is a, a slight familiar tinge of confusion in your mind yourself. You've kind of forgotten for just a second which way you were, you were either ascending or descending. It, it seems as though there's some sense, and maybe more strongly with someone like Sun Kong, as you kind of take a look at his eyes closely, kind of checking him out with your medicine check, that perhaps there's some sort of strange sense of confusion that you guys felt after oh. combating the creatures. It's the hulks. It's the effect of the umber hulks. Nothing we can do now, just keep moving on. It shouldn't be permanent, I hope. Oh, what are those things? You hear Nezel say on your back, Blase. Oh, <laughs> Nezel, they're they're big bads. They're monsters, and they're never gonna they're never gonna hurt you again ever. <laughs> I'm glad to get a ride. My leg kind of hurts. Nezel says. Oh, oh poor baby. <laughs> um, it's because it almost got chopped in half by a giant Umber Hulk <laughs> mandible. Uh. Uh, this is, so I I am also curious about Jira. Um, uh, and Vidi, do you know what's going on with him? Uh, I I don't really. <laughs> um, can I can I use limited telepathy with it so he can communicate simple ideas, emotions, and images to me about what's how's he feeling? Sure, that's his ability. Feeling pretty good. He so he can convey simple images to you. Is that what he can do as part of the telepathy? Simple ideas, emotions, and images telepathically with any creature within a hundred feet that can understand any la a, a la So it communicates based on however you communicate. Jira looks up at you and goes <laughs> and puts a claw. Sort of as it winds around your in between your feet, almost in a cat-like manner, it puts a, a stops and puts a claw on, at the edge of your boot. In your mind, you hear no words. However, you see, sort of like when you stare at a shape in a light and then look away, that sort of ghost image. You see in your mind this ghost image of sort of a silhouette of what looks like Jira the pseudo dragon. And then as you blink, you see a larger version. And then as you blink again, you see a much larger version. And then with another blink, it all vanishes. Oh, 
I... <laughs> I don't know, bud. Uh, and really? Uh, I think he's okay. He might be growing up. I'm not sure. What is he growing up? How big does he get? Uh, just bigger. <laughs> hey. Well, as long as he doesn't eat us and still, you know, revives us and stuff, that's wonderful. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. Maybe. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe he gets bigger when you do good deeds or something like that. Hmm. You feel the weight in VD as Jira sort of clambers up the side of your armor and kind of takes his place back on your shoulder. <sighs> oh, this hurts my neck. <laughs> You can get a ride. Well, we're close to the city now, right? We should keep going. Yes. Quietly? Yeah. You hear Gizma say, It's been like, I, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes? Or however much, including the fact that... Did we just run across these dead things? She says, Yeah, at the you know what? We sure did. It's best not to think about it anymore. She kind of scratches the... You see her third eye close as she scratches her forehead, a bit confused. Wait a minute, why is everybody forgetting about this? It's the... It's it's the Umber Hulks, I say, in just kind of a hushed tone. Oh, okay. Let's go. Uh, yeah. It shouldn't be much longer if that's the case. She kind of pulls the straps around her... her uh, uh, like That's across her, her shoulders, a little taut, to keep her... Her belongings kept up on her back and seems ready to travel further. All right. Um, uh, well, <clears throat> uh, let's 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 go. Let's and Clatter, you protect that the other little baby over here. So I want Clatter to like hover over the Gizma. <laughs> uh. <cl> <laughs> Clatter steps up and uh, Joe Biden's uh, Gizma. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and oh my god. Follows along. Meta. <laughs> um, let's see. You guys continue heading down this descending, slightly narrow cave tunnel that some of you are, are sort of getting the idea because of its narrowness and the fact that. Occasionally a bottlenecks where you guys almost have to single file kind of barely squeeze through some of the parts that It's highly possible that the creatures you fought are the ones that perhaps Created and burrowed the system of, of this tunnel here and perhaps there's more You guys have been going for about 15 or 20 minutes like taking time to Maybe, maybe like a little bit more, I'd say 20, 25 minutes since you guys are trying to stay a little more quiet than usual. Um, the sound that some of you guys made as you're descending, as, as the descent sort of became a little more steep and there was a little more rocks and, and rubble that uh, echoed through as you were trying to uh, do your best, remain silent, stirred up these creatures, some of you are gathering. However, you made it out mostly fine. You guys continue heading down. It's another 10, 15 minutes before you guys see. Normally, as you were descending through this tunnel, the only light was either provided by your senses, your vision, or the, the cracked um, glow stick that one of you had, I believe Rink has. But now yes. you see just the faintest bit. You you watch as the, the tunnel descends on and there's a bit of, of rubble that seems to have closed in the area that would lead further down. However, oh. to the side, you see what looks like very narrow, but it looks like the piece of the cave wall has been burrowed through and there's just the faintest bit of light um, kind of glaring through, peering in from the opening that you see at the left side 
and kind of draping across the floor of the, the cave. Does it look like we can we can move the rubble to do that, to get through? The, well, the rubble sort of like if you guys were to continue in the tunnel. It seems a dead end. Oh, okay. But it looks like there's some type of alternative uh, way to go through at the left side. As you guys sort of near this area, are you still trying to be quiet, or how would you like to proceed? You see a little bit of light just glaring through. It's, it's faint, but it's there. Uh, I'll, I'll whisper to Gazma, is, is that the place? Gizma turns and says, Yeah, uh, this area, it may be a bit of a tight squeeze for some of you. Uh, if we move some of the bricks, uh, it'll lead us into a little sewer tunnel. Uh, at the end is a bent gate that we usually sneak through. I guess the tollers haven't checked it in a while, and so we've been using it to kind of push our way through. Although with all of you guys, you may have to do a bit more of a, a harder bending or, or sneaking through somehow. But we'll see once we get there. But we're getting towards the town now, so I'd be very careful as we approach. Right, oh. right. Everyone maintain your disguises. Uh, you watch as she finishes saying this, that both her and Nezel seem to kind of pull up either sort of like a, a draped robe or hood over their heads oh well we all have like hoods and rags and stuff on us too so mm -hmm. it's fine right yes so do we want to go stealth yes uh i i'll i'll start ahead pushing rocks out of the way oh shit um and I went to rural self as well. I had a roll at disadvantage, but I still got a 24. Uh, moving stealthily, I'm assuming. Yes, that's for stealth. Okay. Uh, Every, everybody, right? Oh, uh, I would think we baby, all want to. Sweetie baby. <laughs> oh my god, that's a 26. Do, do we have to go into the sewer? Quit being such a babe. Seems like it. As you guys head up Jeez. to this entryway that you see to your left, there's some rocks and rubble up here, but as you peer through the sort of open cave entrance, you can see now where it looks like some type of large entrance where you watch as the cave wall opens, it being sort of dug through. You can kind of see a bit of claw markings. And through that, you can see that it leads through a open, destroyed wall of what looks like a, a small sort of like sewage tunnel. This sewage tunnel leads a couple feet in both directions before doing a 90 degree turn. And Gesma points out that you guys should head left. There's a bit of brickwork that sort of cakes the wall on the opposite side of this open cave entrance. It takes some of you just a little bit of pushing to, to kind of knock some of the brickwork out of the way but it seems relatively pliable so you guys don't need to have to make a check through it some of you are slightly louder than others but but others rolled well enough to where they can you know kind of help those through you know um nvidia as you're crawling through your your foot snags on a, a loose brick piece and it's about to uh, topple over. However, uh, Sung, Sung Kong and Aesop together quickly grab it with, with a claw and a monkey paw and kind of set it down quietly. Uh, good, good, good. <sighs> yeah, for buddy. I jokingly act like I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, Gesma turns and says, Just a bit ahead. We don't have to do too much walking through here. There's some an opening into the city and uh, large iron bars that kind of uh, keep us out of the uh, the ways of the sewage system. Like I said, me and Nezel can fit through, but you guys may need to put a little bit of uh, pliability on it. Just try to be quiet. You guys don't know anything about this place, do you? And it's filled with slavers and mobsters and lycanthropes, possibly. 
Aww. number holes. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully no more, yeah. Gizma turns to Nezel and you guys and says, uh, because I believe you guys did this while you were in the shack with Nezel before Gizma hooked up with you guys. She turns and says, uh, what are we going to do if the Tollers try and check up on us? She turns to you guys. The, the Tollers? <laughs> uh, they're like... Weren't we going to pretend that we were, somebody was slaves and somebody was, we were not? We were like, coming here to sell them or something? I think I remember that. Didn't we say that? Yes, uh, I, I'm worried that Hush may have already been apprehended by these slavers. If we can, we should maybe bluff our way into uh, looking like we're here to transport or perhaps purchase some slaves. The first thing I want to do is make sure she's safe. We can worry about 21 after the fact. Purchasing is a good option. I mean... I look to Nvidia and say, you can understand lots of languages. And uh, Glossy seems rather important. Hopefully they don't recognize who we are, because we are kind of famous. I mean, for the galaxy standards, but I mean, a bodyguard, I point to myself, a rich owner, and her translator, and, no offense, but her two slaves. Oh, and I point over to Clatter and say, under their bodyguard. I mean, we're disguised. I'm sure it'll be fine, right? Yeah. You yeah. should gather some info first. Gizma and Nezel turn to one another. Most people in this place, well, a lot of them are slaves. Uh, there's pretty much the people who are slaves, and then there's a few different families through the place, and other people who visit as they come through the scar on their spelljammer. Those ships. I'm guessing you guys probably took one down here. To get to the Indeed. planet, that is. Indeed, yes. Yeah. Uh, how how of... did the ships... I don't understand. How did the ships land? It didn't seem like we could get into the scar with all the smoke coming out of it. Well, as long as they're inside, most of the toxic air doesn't affect them too much. Uh, that's not even really the big worry, honestly. The big worry is... Uh, well, there's a lot of the town guards are up on these towers. They have a mm. lot of these, I don't know, what's, what do you call them? Ballistas? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's, mm, mm. Well, this place is known, as you may be aware, Aesop, they sell all kinds of nefarious things down here, so they're no strangers to alchemical things and properties of such. They use ballistas tipped with special alchemical properties that burst in exploding fire. If you're not allowed to be here or have access to land as you come in, well, they'll just light your ship on fire. Oh. Huh. Okay, well, it's a good thing we didn't try to come down here. Yeah. Probably the reason why no big parties or groups of good people outside of the planet have tried to come and liberate us, I suppose. Well, that and the fact that there's a lot of innocent slaves down here. They couldn't just, I guess, bomb the whole place or whatever they would do. You know, I mean, knowing these kind of people that would do all this, maybe they would. I, I hope not. Oh. I mean, there's a lot of bad people down here, but there is some people who are just trying to make a living. Once you find yourself in Scourge, you can probably guess this by now, but it's hard to get out. Were you always here? I grew up here, yeah. Okay. <sighs> uh, Gesma sort of pushes her back up to the bricked corner of the sewage system and peers around the corner and turns back. So the Tollers. There... Not exactly the guards, but they're sort of like the the watchmen of the town. They're tall, and they're in this copper-looking armor. If they see anything suspicious, they'll come and check, make sure you have identification, and check on your story. That's why it's good for you guys, like you just did, to come up with a... Oh, what, what's, what's the term? Um, Dis disguise? Alibi? 
Alibi, yes. So, if anything bad happens, she turns to Nezzle and Nezzle says, they'll, well, they're called tollers because they have these staffs with bells on them. It's a special kind of bell. When they ring them, it calls the Knights of Acid. What? Oh, that sounds pleasant. The Knights of Acid. Oh, well. I've, I've been to many clubs and had many experiences with the Knights of Acid. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> what? What are they? What do they do? What will they do? I mean, the name probably speaks for itself, but elaborate. Nezzle says... We haven't really ever seen one up close. We saw some, uh, some type of, well, kinkus trying to escape once, and they rang their bell. It's like this metal cylinder came out from the ground, and, well, this knight of acid, it was like in a big black suit, it stepped out. Oh. We ran after that. Ah, uh, well, we just will have to not be caught, Do I suppose. Sack normal, everyone. Mm-hmm. How much, I mean, I know prices vary, but how much would a run-of-the-mill, I mean, I shrug and say it lightly, slave cost? I mean, do you guys know, I mean, just so we're not in there trying to maybe save or buy Hush and get the hell out of here and be like, oh yes, that's 10 million gold or something stupid, you know? Uh, you guys are, you guys can make a check on this if you'd like to just get a general sense. Of I'll even say, Rinkaz, you have advantage on this check if you want to make some type of history or something since you were yeah, once you, a slave. You filthy slave. Um, Gesma is going to think about it herself, but if you guys want to make a check, you're more than welcome to. Alright, I have nothing in history. I have a 10 intelligence. I know how to read and write, so let's... Oh. Oh. God's not man. Well, I have 11. <laughs> hey, 19 ain't bad, boyo. No, sir. Just Rink an 8 for me. Okay, so I'll say, Rinkaz, you remember your time as a slave outside of the Twix, this plane between planes, back in whatever sphere that you found yourself in when you were trapped and, and kept as a slave. And you remember that the prices vary depending on the dependency and lifespan of the particular slaves. But you know, by and large, children are very cheap. They don't exactly last all that long. Uh, you overheard some of this as your time working with the Scrow as one of their slaves when you're captured on one of their ships, their spell jammers. You know that children are very cheap. They usually go for about 10 copper apiece. Damn. Unless they're multi or unable to speak, but no vast amounts of knowledge. My hush would be no less than 10 gold, I would say. Sickly adults who are capable of doing harder lifting than a child could but still don't have a long life expectancy typically go for a few silver pieces. And then finally, a good, solid working person, uh, uh, whatever creature it may be, who looks to have some longevity to them, hasn't been completely just demoralized by being a slave and still has a, a, a certain amount of strength left in their bones can go anywhere from 20 silver pieces up to even a few gold depending on how how strong and well built they are it all depends on the efficiency of the slave you in particular um, just listening in you were probably close to a gold piece or two since they valued your strength and you never fully lost your resolve because you didn't spend, you, you spent long enough as a slave, but you didn't go through all the years to where the, the spirit was sucked out of you. A few years as a slave, 10 years what? in cryogenic time, space, I've done my time. 
Well, if we do find her, assuming she has been captured, which, who knows, I bet she was smart enough to evade them, but if she has been captured, we should be able to acquire her so long as they believe our story. We should talk to this shopkeeper friend of yours. We need to patch up our wounds anyway. Yeah, that's our, really should be our first stop. Okay, we'll lead you there. Oh, uh, wait, if someone does recognize us, uh, I got an idea. Oh, I mean, okay. the billionaires are super rich, and we obviously know from being there that, you know... Oh, they bribe them. Probably, they have, you know, slaves themselves. Either A, bribe them and use a name drop, or B, say, you know, we're kind of undercover helping... Uh, get a few people for them, you know, doing some dirty work for them, in case we are recognized. I, I do have this potion of command. I could I could do like a like a mind trick on them, but it's it wouldn't be very reliable. It would be like a last ditch effort kind of thing. Uh, if we were caught a pistol and say I had the I could help as well, yeah. No, 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 let's keep it as quiet as possible. Oh, no, I mean the, the command gem you gave me, our suggestion, oh, our... that's right. I can never tell with you. It's quite easy to make friends. For me, at least. Um, so if we do run into somebody, I don't mind talking to them and Perfect. changing their mind about us. Perfect. Let's let's get going to that shopkeeper. So those of you who rolled a ten and up with your histories, you as you're trying to just pull on your memory strings, also remember that you were given directions to a particular intersection in the city that you know of, two crossing streets that leads to a a butchery with a back oh, door to it. That's... That's right. What what was there again? What was the what was the purpose of us going there? I forgot. It was marked with dry blood, and as long as you guys held the key that you originally got back on Neo Gokio from the tenth pit on you, which I'm sure someone has in their possession, it will serve as a gateway to the tenth pit's headquarters. Oh, that's right. Oh, we we need to find them as well. I need to know where my sister is. Yeah. Maybe they can help us. With this planet this way. Maybe we can... Do we feel... Okay enough with the tent pit... To, like, rest there? Do you think they would even let us? I don't know. They seem kind of stingy. Well, look, we're only gonna need an hour to patch up our wounds, right? Alright. Yeah, Martha, I, I you, so. you still have magical energy, right? A little bit, yes. Okay, well... I think we'll I have exhaustion, it. but I'm alright. Well, stop okay. being you. <laughs> it's hard. I, you know. I suppose you're right. So should we go there first? Yeah, let's go take a second. Those on Well, no well I mean, let's see what. I think the shopkeeper's closer than the butchery. Yes. Oh. Yeah. No, oh, that's what I meant. Yeah. Let's go rest yeah. up. Go to the shop. And, yeah. Okay. And then head out from there. Gizma says she turns and ways for you guys to kind of follow okay quiet everyone i'm gonna fucking do that um i'm going to give this to nvd if he needs to make a self check it's a good idea uh thank you mm -hmm. as you guys Around the corner, you see the circular opening of the gated sewer entrance or exit that leads out of the sewage piping here into the city proper. It's dark and difficult to see, although it looks to be some type of darkened alleyway past this cobblestone and a bit of a sickly green air uh, fills the area here. There's a, a certain just slightly stinging uh, smell to the air as it pervades your nostrils. 
Not enough to do any damage, but a little irritating for those of you who aren't used to the area of Scourge here. Ugh. You can see both Nezel and Gesma have pulled their hoods and actually have small little pieces of cloth and scarves that they pulled over their mouths. Uh, probably both to not only hide them, but also to mask the, uh, the difficult atmosphere. There Crazy. is, in the bottom right corner, you can see that two or three of these iron bars that, that run pretty close together, going vertically across this, this tunnel exit. Not enough to fit a body through, but over in the bottom right corner you can see two of the bars are bent out and look to be broken. It is large enough for what looks like any creature small to fit through. However, a medium creature would have great difficulty fitting through unless some other means was, was made to get through. Hmm. You guys can hear in the distance the very subtle sounds. Uh, the clambering of movement, speech, the clanking of armor and footsteps, the hammer uh, turning cog, but you don't necessarily see anyone. There is just the pitter patter of a greenish looking water that spills out from below your feet as it exits the sewage system here and the darkness of the alleyway ahead. Well, here goes nothing, huh? Um. I don't know, Glossy, do you think you're strong enough to bend these bars so we can get through? I can try. I was gonna try something also after if you want, or just have an idea. Well, let me give it a go. And... Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Glossy will... Do I have to squeeze through something first, or do I... Is this what we're trying to squeeze through? Well, we're trying to bend the bars a little, make it a little bigger okay. for us. I will attempt. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm yeah. going to attempt to. Uh, I go up to the bars, crack my knuckles, twirl my hair, twirl around and stretch like ballerina style, and then. <laughs> I, I uh, go to the bar. All right, make me a strength athletics check, please. Stab. I think I'm going to use my inspiration for this, because if I can do it to where it helps everybody in the party, I feel like... <laughs> Jason's like, yeah, use it early. Yeah, <laughs> I mean... I, I will say that you feel like if you're able to just use your brute strength to bend these iron bars out of the way that look slightly dilapidated themselves, oh, okay. there may be some subtle noise, but it sure beats trying to like beat them open with a weapon or anything. It would at least mean that you could fit the the party members through relatively quietly. Okay. Um. Well, I will. I don't think I have anything for noise, unless we can use the decanter of endless water to pour down the the bars while I. I don't know how that would work. Never mind. I'm not going <laughs> you feel like it would be pretty quiet, bending the bars. Okay. As opposed to, like I said, just kind of bashing them with a weapon or something like that. Well, it wasn't the best roll, but it wasn't the worst roll. Um, that's going to be... This is... A, athletics? No, just a strain. Athletics, yep. Oh! Uh, let's see... Six, seven, eight... Eighteen? Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah, that's not bad at all. <clears throat> DC was fifteen. You... Nice. Do your twirl, your dance, kick up a foot high in the air, and then grip the two bars and begin pushing them as hard as you can. It takes probably 15, a little longer seconds. Gesma and Nezel sort of lean close. Nezel sort of sloops off of your back and just watches intently as you push the bars. Finally, after this number of seconds, you feel them begin to give way with your strength you feel the sensation as you're kind of gripping the ends that have been sort of bent out already as you kind of continue to try to pull them up your way to pull them up further so that you and the rest of those medium size can fit through you pull one up all the way to where you feel like it needs to be and you feel as the other one makes an audible snap 
but not too loud as it completely pops off in your hand. Clearly removed oh. and able for everyone else to fit through. Oh, there you go. Yeah, good job, Glasse. Very nice. Well then, come along, slaves, I say and wink to <laughs> our two quote-unquote slaves that aren't really slaves. Yeah. Okay. The both of them look at each other, nod, and kind of just pull their stuff over their eyes. We'll kind of lead you the way. Just follow when I tap at you to go down the blocks. All right. Can do. Perfect. If any of the tollers come up and ask you for anything, well, do whatever you guys can. You said you could handle that, right, Classe? Oh, yes. Okay. I'd, I'd really rather not talk to them, though, so let's try our best to be silent. Indeed. Always. You guys each take a moment to quietly slip through the iron bars, or the iron opening from where the bars have been bent, finding yourselves in a very shadowy, dead-end alleyway. A thick cloud pervades the top of this area. You can see in the distance the silhouettes and shadows, although murky to see far off because of the sort of just ambient smog that kind of fills the area. In the distance there seems to be moving people, whether slaves or slave owners, you're unsure. However, as you each make it all the way through and begin to head out of the alleyway and into the city of Scourge proper, you are now able to step out and see Scourge in its full glory. Ugh, disgusting. It's, um, charming. You see just rows and rows of brass copper piping most of it covered in mildew and and green flecks a uh, pervading number of pipework just fills the city pluming this greenish smog all of it as you kind of look up see it just filtering through up into what looks like the slightest bit of light though covered by the smog you're guessing that at the top of this whole area is where the scar is in the distance, you can see a few spell jammers lined up. Across the way here, there's a, it, it's it's not dim light, but there is a a darkened sense to this area where you get the idea that this is a place where a lot of shady business could happen. Um, the lights illuminating the area are sparse and flicker with a light, sometimes greenish tint to it. You guys have found yourselves in Scourge. You see silhouettes of what look like winged creatures flying above. Uh, although, without a check, you're unsure what they are. They seem small. Like bats, maybe? Um, I, I could tell you with a check. Fucking nature check! Hey, mm. fuck me, am I, am I right? Fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> wow. They're flying lions! Who knows, Aesop? <laughs> Who knows? I, I look to the party and say, if one day I'm going to crawl off the ship into a planet, onto a planet, or out of a sewer, there's going to be a, a desert paradise or a or beach with with little drinks and little hats and or 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 maybe maybe even an ocean with a nice place to because relax. Because are you okay? <laughs> This galaxy sucks. Everything is evil. I look to the kids and say, I will promise that if we get off of this place, that I will show you a better place. Oh, Sorry, I know it's your home, but I promise you. <laughs> I know it's your home, but it's hot garbage. But this place <laughs> sucks. Uh, Nezel kind of lightly uh, pats your left uh, thigh, Rinkaz, and just holds a finger up to his mouth. Oh, Sorry. Flaming garbage <laughs> cheap, I'll hear he, me. He nods at you in turns. Um, and a 12 nature. With that 12 nature, Sun Kong, it was a relatively easy DC. Just ones, unfortunately, aren't going to cut it. <laughs> uh, Sun Kong, these are. They look like pigeons. <laughs> what is a pigeon? Oh, they're like. 
everywhere. There's just small birds that are ev kind of everywhere. Well, they had oh. big ones in Jadra. True, yeah, there were those giant pigeons. On it. Kind of uh, one of those. Does anybody not have their, their hood or something pulled up over their heads? I mean, I think we all got our disguises on. Yeah, right? yeah I think we all. I'm already in tattered monk robes. <laughs> Gesma turns to you, Sun Kong, and pulls at her hood over her head and says, Keep this on. Acid pigeons. She says, pointing up at her. Acid pigeons? <laughs> what? Don't, you don't want that poop on your car. No, you do not. Beach paradise. <laughs> well, let's, let's just try to get to the, the shop. Yes, hmm. let's, please. She says, nodding her head and chi. So, let me get a, a... Let me get, like, a, a marching stance here. Who's who's taking up the lead? Who's heading the back? Oh, Arrange your guys in another marching stance, please. Hmm, okay. Um, I guess there's no harm in just doing what we were doing beforehand. Yeah, like... which side's the front? I'm going to say that the right side is the front. And I will also make it so that the children are controlled by all of you. Yeah. I will also make sure that Nizzle is not marked as dead. <laughs> uh, I have command the clatter to watch over these two with this unlife life. Clatter takes the chains in hand and the you watch as the two kids kind of hold the wrist out, just visible enough to see that a, a cuff link is around each of their wrists. It's a little large fitting, and you feel like with an easy wiggle they could pull themselves out, but it looks convincing enough from a distance? Okay. Good. Alright, so Sun Kong taking up the forefront, I'm assuming? Yep. Okay. I can't have this monkey talking to people. Oh, shit. Yeah, I need you don't. with me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. As you guys begin to work your way... Oh, were you going to say something sometimes? How dark is it? It is not dim light, but you can see clearly that there are lots of areas with patches that would be dim light here. Okay, I just want to make sure then uh, that I... I put my tattoo, it's not visible. Since I don't need it anymore. Your tattoo... I, uh, your, my eye on my your forehead. Your third eye? Okay, okay. Yeah. I would say that that would probably help down here. Oh, okay, never mind. I'll put it out there. Okay, so... I'm the, the darkened alleyways that run through the blocks of these just large copper-like structures, some looking like very cheap homes others looking like some type of factory or industrial areas uh, the splash of puddles underneath your feet as you work across the mismatched cobblestone although with your tattoo activated the dark alleyways light up there is a bit of discoloration to them they lose some of the the coloring to them however you're able to peer through Occasionally you see a couple figures standing together uh, in hushed whispers. As you guys are beginning to work your way into the city proper of Scourge, you begin to see various races. You guys see a trail and line of what look like kinku and chains. At the leading end seem to be two drow-like figures. Uh, do I see any forms that look like Hush? Uh, you can make a check if you'd like. Oh, I'm gonna make a check. I wanna help. I wanna look for Hush, Let's, too. Um, yeah, I will as well. What are we yeah. checking? How do we... Uh, perception gonna, check. Perception. It's gonna be a 9 on perception. God damn. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I was gonna say I have to roll disadvantage, but I can't roll worse. I got an 18. Let me just... Aesop, your previous one, what was that roll on? Uh, that was nature, to identify the flying creatures above us. Both your you eyes, and Sun you Kong 
Please What's that? Draw. This was for the um. What were we just doing? Oh yeah. Pers if you and Sun Kong would please draw one of those cards. <sighs> uh, Could I use a perception like... to look for ear to the ground? Look for any shady bounty hunter or criminal folk that I might be able to have contact. Oh boy. <laughs> That's a, a a good call. Also, mine is fail a skill check. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll, let me pick. Oh shit! Hold on to that, Asa. Um, you know, I don't have to, right? Mine um, is the next person you interact <laughs> with takes an irrational okay. disliking to you. Ja Perfect Jason, for you. Jason, I don't like this deck. Get in the deck. Yeah, uh, can I? Uh, I guess I wouldn't. It's, I wouldn't know that. You guys wouldn't like, know. God damn it. <clears throat> yeah. Daddy, the I punishment stay doesn't lying. feel good. <laughs> I'm here to talk to people, though. I know Sun Kong is like... dis... <laughs> What? I'm sorry. Hmm? As you peer around, Rinkaz, you don't see anyone in particular yet that you, you would see as some type of fence or possible contact. However, you can tell just by the body language of a lot of the figures that pass by, you... You see this trail of kinku and chains being led by the drow. Um, you guys notice a few gnome kind of scampering by. You see the occasional humans, some of them covered in boils, one with a large scar across his eye. They're all dressed in this very dark, sort of wet looking uh, leather and gear, uh, moving their way through the area here. As you guys are looking through Rinkaz, you can tell that you don't necessarily see anyone like that, but just the style of people here, that there's more than likely someone here that you may know. You would just have to search them out. Um, as for your guys' perception checks when determining to see about if any of these figures in this particular line look to be like Hush, um, who got the highest roll? Is that? Let's I see here. Eight. Oh, so Glasse, you? I see, yeah, I think so. You study the figures. A lot of them covered, similar to you guys, uh, kind of covering a lot of their features. So it's difficult to tell. Your total was eighteen for the yeah. history. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like any of these are hush. Although you're not a hundred percent. They're sort of being led by you now. You can kind of see the backs of them as they're being pulled. You see the last one kind of pulled a little more forward and almost stumbling along in these chains as the two drow lead them across the way. Can I... Sorry, can I get an idea of where they're going to? Um... You make me a... Hmm... Me what to do, Make me like either an insight or like an investigation check. Well, I will attempt to make an insight check knowing that <laughs> I can fail a skill check at any time. You could. That's an 18 on insight. You take a second to watch the gate of these two slave owners as they pull the group along. One of them sports an interesting looking sort of uh, pirate goggle just that slips over just one eye. Um, they pull the group along. As they round the corner, you notice their body movements shifting and slowly moving as you sort of look above. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of verticality to the city being made up of the entrance being coming from descending from the scar itself. There's a lot of buildings that stretch up and out in structures, a lot of scaffolding that you see, some not even fully built yet or in some state of decay. However, you do see in the distance what looks to be a structure that has a number of smokestacks with this sort of billowing, smoky, greenish plume coming out. Uh, it okay, looks like so some type of large facility or something, uh, probably a good 30 or so minutes out. Okay, so maybe something over there, then. 
it's kind of tucked away in between the other sort of housing and structures, so it's really difficult to take out, to make out what exactly it is, but you can at least sort of get the sense that they're heading that way. I will keep that in mind, then. Gizma and Nezel continue following along. They occasionally, walking along with you and Vidi, just tap at the side of your leg and very subtly point occasionally and I'm assuming you would kind of share this with the rest of the groups you guys can weave and bob in between the the groups of, of people here there's a decent amount of people you occasionally see clumps moving and turning you hear the sound of uh, the almost a never-ending sound of clinking chain at somewhere at some point in the area the turning of a cog wheel the pluming of smoke as you guys are making your way through, there are at times the occasional figure that passes by. They don't necessarily make eye contact, but let me ask you guys this, as you're making your way through with Nezon Gesma, are you trying to be stealthy in any sense? Not stealthy is so much like you're crouching because you're sort of walking down these open walkways, but just uh. sort of trying to like keep yourselves out of of, of being sort of looked at you know you're, you're trying to just keep to yourselves yeah I would say I'm trying yeah yeah for sure I want to know what the surrounding area like do the people seem like they're trying to keep to themselves about like what does it look like what does the normal person look like like how they're acting are they silent are they kind of like I just want to mimic the norm give me an Insight or perception check. Fuck. Can I, can I assist on perception with an injury? Um, I don't know actually. Just trying to look at the rules. Well, then that's a yes. <laughs> um, I'll say with an injury, no. Okay, I'm going to do an insight check. Fuck. Oh, fuck. That's a seven. Glossy, you see a lot of people keeping to themselves. A lot of them... There's no children here that you see at all. You see everything from what looks like adult to older. A lot of them look world-weary. A lot of them are almost difficult to see because of their pulled up hoods, a lot of uh, body covering. You get the sense that they, as similar to you, are just trying to keep out of the toxic air and acid pigeons as they make their way through the city streets. Okay. Occasionally they seem to be doing dealings with one another in hush whispers. And you do hear the occasional sort of yelling in the distance and rattling of chain. But it does seem as though everyone is sort of just at least from what you see in the more properly lit areas of what light is down here, that everyone is trying to keep to themselves and just get to where they need to go. Okay. Let's get to where we're going, shall we? Okay. What's my motivation here? Acid planet, acid pigeons, slaves, God, depression, gotcha. Keep your eye on the little ones. I don't want them to get snatched up. Yes, of course. So, they are slaves, after all. Nezel and Gesma, are they the only ones in chains? Yes. All yeah, I think so. I, I I don't think anybody else we had we had set up to be in chains. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, you're a kinku, though. That would look great. I, I, I am, but I have my mask, and I have wings, so... That's true. That's true. I could I could bluff as a what was Team Giku? Was he? Did he say he was a Tingu? Oh yes. yeah. Yes. I can also I can also talk, so that's true. another good way to bluff. That's true. Aesop, you know your wings aren't the traditional wings, being the three dimensional wings. However, you are right. You sure. have a number of features that still separate you from the standard Kinku. Yeah. Yes. Now I'm gonna try to look as unKinku like as possible. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are trying to stay unobserved and just keep to yourselves as you move through the city, 
Everyone, please make a group stealth check. Hey! Group stealth. Daddy! That's, um, that's gonna be 14. Remember, you, Mvidi, you still have that, you know, inspiration, D10. Uh, yes. Yes, I oh. do. Oh, well, you also... The last time you tried to use the D10, you got a 20 as well. Just give him D10, Salte. Hmm. Yeah. Uh... Sun Kong, 17. 21 for Glasse. Rink has 13. And VD was 22 yourself? Yeah, I got a natural 20. Oh, fuck. And Jira's gonna roll a 16 on stealth. But, I don't know. He's also on my shoulder, being a little bit large. <laughs> he's, he's a big <laughs> boy. <laughs> Parrot dragon's getting a little bit heavy for this. <laughs> Can't you fly? <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> you watch as Jira shifts down to your side, sort of clinging at your side, kind of digging its claws, not into your flesh or anything, just kind of in between your side and your packs to hold on. Kind of underneath your, your well, now smudged and kind of bloody cape. Out of sight. Aesop, everyone is keeping to themselves, just trying to watch the path ahead, occasionally darting your eyes at your periphery to watch the people passing by. Aesop, you leading the back, close to Rinkaz. Your attention is drawn as you guys are turning through some of the twisting alleyways and, and streetways here. You notice what looks to be a rather tall humanoid beginning to pass through a clump of people who quickly move out of its way. It is a very tall looking figure donned in what looks like a copperish armor. There's an interesting looking greenish uh, pipe work that runs from some type of back uh, with a pipe reaching up to its helm. Its face, you're unable to tell if this is a human or what type of species this is within as the helm is housed in this greenish gas. Carrying with it in one hand is a very tall, copper-looking staff at the top, an intricate-looking bell. It begins to slowly look your way, at least what you can tell as your attention is drawn before Runkaz quickly kind of pulls your shoulder a bit, leading you with the groups. Oh. So you automatically fail, but the rest of the group <laughs> did well enough to escape that. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> uh, you watch as what you're assuming is the, a toller shift slowly towards you, but you guys kind of pick up the pace a little bit with Runkaz's help ushering you guys forward at just a slightly more rapid pace and you slowly lose sight of the toller. Oh, good, good catch, Rinkaz. Mm -hmm. do, uh, do I get a good luck card for the 20? <laughs> yes, you do. Thank hey. you for reminding me. And you guys should be able to see these cards now. The next yeah. person you meet instantly likes you. You're not a bad <laughs> guy, but the fucking monkey. <laughs> God, I hate this monkey. Thanks. Perfect. All right. What's going on? I'm sorry. That's okay. Gesma and Nezel continue just lightly tapping, leading you guys through the alleyways. You guys keeping to yourselves by and large. five ten minutes working your way through the streetways trying your best to breathe it's difficult almost down here I'm getting used to it they Gesma just lightly points in beauty and you look up to see a blistered sign whatever it once said the top seems to be scrawled out and another piece of wood is 
is sort of tacked on with some ratty looking nails and it says uh, Meswick's um, what's the term is it reagents is that how you pronounce it yeah that's good enough okay how, how do you pronounce it is it different I, 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 th- I think it's reagents reagents okay yeah you see uh, whoever owned this place before it's now owned by Meswick and you see uh, a tattered looking door uh, some light kind of piercing through some of the pieces that have been kind of beaten off of it um, but above you see the sign Meswick's Reagents. Well, this is the place. Let's get these little ones inside. <laughs> as in a Move voice it. That does not belong to him. <laughs> it's Schlev's voice. Yeah, it is. It's Schlev's voice. <laughs> you guys make your way inside? Yeah. All right. Um, Sun Kong, I'm assuming, leading, pushing open the door, you see a somewhat confined and tattered looking shop. There isn't much on the entryway as you lead in. There is a couple signs and posters pointing out different um, items that the place carries, but you see that A large majority of it is kept behind the counter. You see a gruff uh, sitting at what looks to be some type of tattered bar stool up at a ratty counter. You see a a kind of gruff looking smaller humanoid, you're guessing gnome, uh, with sort of like a a tie-back cap and uh, brandishing a beard. Uh, He has one beady eye that, that seems more pronounced than the other he has what looks like some type of uh, some type of like cigar or perhaps magicig that he shifts from one side of his mouth to the other as he peers at you with one eye as you kind of push in (laughs) yeah does he recognize the kids yeah he watches you all so others can come As you guys all step in, his furry eyebrows push up, a little bit surprised by the amount. It's a ball whole party, huh? Yeah. You could say that. Well, you don't look familiar, any of you. Welcome to Meswick's. What can I do you for? Um, can Clatter, like, bring these two... Uh, ah, 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 ah. He says, holding up a hand as he sees this tall iron giant push two up front. Don't want no slaves, he says. You got some ID? He taps the desk. Um. Yes. I, I stooped down to the kids. And said, I thought I thought you knew this. They look to one another and peer around and slowly begin to pull up and off their hoods and pull down their scarves. What? What's going on here? Meswick says, kind of leaning over the counter. Gesma looks and says, uh, It's okay. They're friends. Meswick, these are adventurers. Uh, they need our help. Indeed we do. We're here to cause a ruckus with the trine. We also are here to rescue one of our friends. We believe the trine may have her in the their custody I also have some things to sell Gizma says <laughs> oh, you brought also the whole that. party with you he says kind of staring at you all he shifts the, the cigar from one end to the other alright you motley crew you ain't gonna be causing any trouble that ties back to me I just want you to know that what you're just a local proprietor you wouldn't Let us into your back room where we could patch our wounds or anything incriminating like that. Now, would you? I sure as fuck wouldn't. (laughs) See, no, see, what I did there was... (laughs) I was... Okay, you should... I'm saying... You you know what? It's fine. Glossy, you talk to him. This, sir... I'm very frustrated already. (laughs) We got in a fight with a couple of nasty Umber Hulks. We just need to rest a little bit. 
We'll be quiet and won't cause any trouble. We haven't caused any trouble yet, and... I'm the Hawks. Yeah. Those big beetle yeah. creatures? Mm-hmm, in the caves. Yeah, out in the caves. Oh, dear God. Is everyone okay? The kids are alright, right? Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. They're perfectly what fine. Uh, A they, picture of health. They both smile as Meswick quickly runs up, pushing the front door closed. You see a number of locks that he begins to shift and turn and click. He finally shifts out of his pockets a huge padlock and snaps it shut. You see him quickly open the nearby windows and flip a sign out that says close before slamming them shut and throwing an iron bar over them. He comes over checking both of them. Uh, you sure they're all right? Nezzle, you feeling okay? He says as he kind of studies the large amount of blood that's at the back end of Nezzle's <laughs> uh, cl- cloth work and stuff like that. I feel okay, Nezzle says. They've been taking care of us. Yeah, there are friends. You should really let them rest up here, Maswick. I can sell some things to you in the meantime. He I'll looks to the, the rest of you. Ah, uh, it ain't causing any trouble in my place. Not in your place, no. Don't dream of it. Uh, what if I were to buy things while everybody kind of is out of sight? Well, don't you need to recharge as well, NVT? I do, but we're kind of running into some opposition here. I just close the doors turn the signs. I suppose you could look at my wares. You guys look like... Well, who are you affiliated with? Why'd you come down here? We're wild knots. And... Like... You guys picked a place to visit. Yeah. Well, like... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just gonna say, well, like Aesop said earlier, we're, we're here to find a friend and take take down what you know roll up the the trine we've had a few run-ins with them in the past we're here to uh settle the score so to speak (laughs) well that's a nice dream i have maybe you find your friend sure but riling up the trine they own half this place well we know people and we know the pioneer patrollers i'm sure they'd be able to help somehow (laughs) they wouldn't come a stretch near here why not how'd they get in Uh, they know the place exists but the politics of it all the actual strategy maybe they send an agent or two every once in a while but it's like a carved hole in the ground with a narrow narrow inside it's hard to get through and even once you do there's a lot of innocent people here too mm, yes couldn't couldn't exactly carpet bomb the place I suppose they oh, could gosh. glad they have it's it like, though it's like a uh, uh, their entire commerce is human shield uh, alright let's 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 rest for a spell and if you can if you can provide us with some information on the surrounding area uh, you know there might be a little gold in it for you as well all right well you while not certainly got deep pockets from what I understand at least <laughs> oh yes it's it tends to be a little exaggerated Aesop says as he strokes his 15,000 gold wings <laughs> This is my first time being poor. It's quite fun. (laughs) (laughs) What a glossy thing to say. (laughs) He kind of sneers and uh, looks to the rest of you. (laughs) How long are you planning on staying? You can't stay here overnight. No, just an hour or so. Yes, yes, we're we're not planning to stay overnight. What is night like here, by the way? Uh, It's like day, because it's night too. Okay. Good hey, answer. Don't get any night. Well, don't get any sunshine down here. I can still keep track of the hours, though. We all gotta sleep. 
A couple more hours and it'll be time for me to close up officially. I suppose I could close a little early tonight, though. As long as you guys only spend roughly an hour, I don't want any of those tolls knocking on my doors. Oh, but of course, we'd hate to put you in a compromising situation. And I'll sell you my wares. But, don't go thinking you're gonna use any poisons or anything on the people, especially the families here, if that's what you get your noses in. They know better than that. Definitely not. We would never, no. Oh. Well, it won't be comfortable back there. And don't think about pocketing any of my stock. But if you kept the kids safe, I suppose I could let you back there for a, a little while. Thank you. You are too kind, Mr. Meswick. Meswick, did you grow up here? No. Came here when I was young, though. Pretty much grew here. Mm. Okay. I at least know what life is like on the off worlds, know how much of a shithole this place is. You know, I. Classe, I wonder if, uh. Other people we know, and I, like, look to her and wink a little, maybe, uh. Here. You know, some people that may have gone missing recently. Um, I, uh... Well, that would be quite convenient if your sister were here. Oh! I completely... Not to worry you, but, you know, maybe we should keep our eye out. Oh, what would she be doing in a place like this? God, I, it didn't even pass... Oh, no, 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 I, I cannot see her being here. I cannot! Well, um, I suppose, if nothing else, the peacekeepers will know, but let's... Let's get up in tip-top shape before we go out again. I'd like to ask Mr. Meswick a few questions as well after we're done. You see him sort of go up to a few lanterns that are set around to provide some ambient light and snuff them out. He pushes open a door that leads into a very cramped back room. You see a number of mismatched bags and a, a very disorganized uh, menagerie of stock he allows you to enter and he also within the hours time if you guys are interested shows you his wares which is hang on just a second i Uh, need reagents potions poison and herbs merchant Mm. He sells up to medium quality, although if you guys were going to try and buy one thing off of the good list, or see if one of the things off of the good list is available, one of you can make a high or low luck roll. Hmm. Get that herb. Oh, I, I dropped the fire on my cane, by the way. Okay, okay. I don't know if I I don't know if I mentioned that last week. So you're not walking in with a, a <laughs> Hellboy flaming, flaming sword, <laughs> yeah. Filter of love or oil slipperiness might rather be useful down here. Like I mean, escaping something that's binding you. And let's see. Everyone else gets everyone gets ten temporary hit points from Invidi's thing. Everybody, five party members get ten. And I get fifteen. Sick. Um. Hey, don't sit on that. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> He's just purifying it. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess somebody on Scourge wouldn't know what that means. Uh, at any rate, Eswick, have you heard of any reports of a unsightly avian creature stalking the night, perhaps doing the bidding of the Dark Trine? Large, uh, almost like a were-raven. <sighs> Seen anything like that? No. Or, or heard is kind of pulls the 
cigar from his mouth, the, the, the long cigar, skinny, and says, uh, I heard some whispers, though. Do Something tell. pissing off the elementals down below. The making element. the... Well, yeah, well, I suppose you, you people aren't, haven't been here before, have you? Correct. Uh, Knights of Acid. There's acid elementals below us. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Pleasant. They build a number of tunnel systems below us, and that's where the things live. I heard rumors that when the families first set up shop here that they made some kind of deal with the elementals. And when they need their services, all they gotta do, those toys, is ring the bells, and that calls one. Ooh. I see, I see. But Heard they're upset, though, recently. As to why, I don't know. Heard inklings of something going on, something that's been rattling some of the families up a bit. Scuzzy Atelli family, specifically, but uh, beyond some riffraff talk here and there with the customers, I ain't heard nothing else. Mm -hmm. Try to keep my nose out of the family's business, just do my own, if you know what I mean. I see. The Scuzzy Atelli family, they're poison crafters, yes? One of the best in the twixt, or so they say around here. And you think there's something that's bothering them? Yeah, something about a bad deal, something like that. I'm not really sure. They do more than just poisons, although that's their mainstay. They're, they do all kinds of stuff. They use the various factories through here. They own most of them. Then the, I suppose... I suppose you could help give us a lay of the land, perhaps, where we could contact the Scuzziatelli family? I can tell you where their keep is, but, I mean, are you guys just expecting to go and knock up on the doors? No. What, what exactly are the, like, what are they? You mean I what mean, they look like? Yeah, are they gnomes? Are they... Uh, a mix match. The Scuzziatelli family is less of a... a type of lineage family name and more just a hodgepodge of who's in the hierarchy list of who's left alive. There's a drow or two. I believe there's a gnome somewhere in there. I haven't done much business with them. They're quite a bit above my pay grade, and to be honest, I don't want to do business with those folks. Great, we're dealing with another gang. It's, uh... Everybody knows that the Baron who rules over this area, Scourge, is also... Scuzziatelli family himself. Though he, I'm pretty uh, sure, is a human. Well then, perhaps we'll... find a way to cross paths with them. Maybe we can offer them work. If something's bothering them, I mean, we're wild knots, right? We we take all sorts of skeevy jobs. Um, but we Can could I... also be sold as slaves. I'd like to see them try. Do these families feud at all between each other? Of course. There's a lot of backstabbing, a lot of somebody turned up dead yesterday type of stuff, but no one really messes with the scuzzy Atelis. They're the ones who mostly put people on the ground. Mm. Which is strange to hear rumors that uh, someone's uh, ruffled their feathers. Excuse the pun. <clears throat> it may be more apt than you think. Ah, okay, well, that's good to know. Um, you guys, uh, he kind of looks across at you guys. You guys got some type of ID, though, right, while you're down here? Ooh, about that. No, we don't. We don't. Maybe you could help us with that? Uh, you guys do know that you... The three... Drips of what look like an acid mark, you guys. Oh. What is this? That's the ID? Uh, okay. It, I, I figured it would be something a little more official than that. Uh, we'll say Nezel kind of points that out. Usually people, uh, Meswick turns have it on a 
special type of leather. There's a special way it's burn on into it that the tollers can see. Although a lot of people here who are a long timer just get it either tattooed or burned into them just to, so they don't have to carry it around. You don't want to be caught without it. Hmm. Right. How convincing is the ones that we've added to our disguises? Uh, so he comes over to take a look. Uh, can you remind me how you guys have this form of the symbol? Uh, I think Aesop's is on yeah. his mask under his eyes like a prison tier tattoo. Okay. okay. <laughs> what about that... everyone else? I have it on my like cheek like a tear as well. Mm -hmm. Sun Kong? I think mine was... I don't remember. Forehead? Let's just say forehead. He studies in VD. Uh, left eye. Underneath left eye. And then Rinkaz, you had yours in the back of the head. That was his tattoo, I thought. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, I don't know if Rinkaz is here. Rinkaz, are you alive? He looks across to the rest of you and says, Under the eye is usually the most convincing to the folks here. There's no proper place to put it, just somewhere easy to pull out when you need it and a toller comes up to you. Or, of mm. course, when you're dealing with a family. Of course, of course. And uh, It looks okay from what I see, but, you know, I'm no expert forger. I see. So Wouldn't dealing... hold up the scrutiny then. Dealing with the tollers, how does one usually interact? Would you look at them? Do you say anything at all? Are you silent the entire time? What's the proper way to address them if you are uh, approached by one? Well, you quickly fumble and get your ID out and show it to them as soon as possible. Answer the questions and get on your way. Gotcha. Act intimidated, I'm sure we won't need to act intimidated, but show them the ID and then move on after... Okay, yeah, that seems easy. I've seen those knights of acid in action. They rarely take prisoners. Do you ah. think it's easy to <laughs> fool one? Not the knight, but the taller. I don't know, miss. It may be, but hell if I'm ever trying it. Well, okay then. Uh, two more, two more questions. Hopefully, very quick. Uh, do you know of a butchery nearby? Uh, it has a red heart painted on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can show you the way there. There's a local oh. butcher, Benny. He works there. Ah, uh, good, good, good. Close by. Yeah, close to the the tavern nearby. And second question: In terms of the slave trade here, do they? Do they tend to separate by the races, or, or no, how, how, no. Do they, how do they store them? Uh, lots of kinku, which is yes. kind of interesting since you're trying to pass off as a slave owner yourself. I don't know how that's going to work, but you do you. Mm. Mostly kinku here, although there's a mix of other races in there. Slavers don't care who it is, really. Kinku just happen to unfortunately be the ones breeding the most around these parts, and so they unfortunately get turned into the slaves. A lot of trying coming here over the past couple years, specifically doing a lot of business. Started getting a lot of property built up around, uh, putting money into the area. Also really uh, funding things by bringing in the slaves and pulling the ones out that they choose to. All right, then. I think in that case, is there like a, a pin where the slaves are collected? Uh, is it like a centralized location? Does it vary by family? Or? Oh, it's going to vary by family. They're spread out across the city. You probably see a lot of them just passing through the streets. Not all of them are in chains. Most of them are, though. A lot of them work at the factories near here. I see. Okay, factories got it. Good to know. But the factories are guarded. Don't think you can just go waltzing in. I suppose you guys got the right idea in trying to get in with one of the families first. 
but I just think... know that you can't just knock on the front door. Of course, of course. I hope we can figure out something. I suppose you guys could if you're convincing enough. You all seem like a eclectic type from what I can see. Is it so strange for somebody to want to join this strong family? I suppose not. Then maybe we should pose as admirers that aspire to be part of the family. That's a great idea. I, maybe we should. Do they have like a recruitment office or something? <laughs> Uh, they usually recruit you. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I've never really seen anybody just walk up with, like, a job application in hand. Right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But again, right. I, I haven't seen too many wild knots come down here either. You guys may have a certain set of abilities and looks that, um, I don't know, pique the interest of the scuzzy Atelis. Oh, well, would some, would they want pretty pretty faces? Me and Golden Boy, ignore that head injury, are quite the pretty pretty faces and would love to <laughs> show off. Can you guys uh, be hard and own a number of slaves or brew a nasty uh, poison up that'll knock someone out within a few seconds? Our slaves can. I look at Aesop. Uh, oh, 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 is is that the cue for me to be a slave? I, I mean, I don't know how they feel I, about us having a kink, but right, you know... Let me, let, let me just take the mask off then. Oh, oh, ooh, ooh, what about this, right? Uh, I'm a very valuable slave because I can brew potions, which is something that I can literally do if they want poisons. Yes, and that's why you don't have chains, and that's in, why you're walking... Well, maybe, maybe keep me in loose chains, just in case. Oh, yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. A good idea, though. I take off my mask and kind of look slavish, I guess. <laughs> uh, Meswick uh, looks over to see kind of huddled at the feet of Clatter, sort of like knees, their arms wrapped around their knees. You see, f having fallen asleep, Nezel and Guzma. Uh, you guys are planning to do more with those kids or what? Well, we were planning to come back and get them home safely, but I don't suppose you'd be able to at least look after them for the night. I want to take them off planet after all of this is done. They're coming with us. They have to. Them and Nana's, they can't live yeah, here. Yes, of, of course, of course. But we can't just drag them into the scuzzy Atelli stronghold, can no, we? absolutely not. No, I wouldn't suggest that. I'll, uh... I'll look after the kids, he kind of says, uh, kind of tipping his hand to the side with a cigar. Uh, they've stayed over once or twice before. Well, I will slide this gentleman t ten gold and say thank you for the information. Holy shit, you guys weren't lying. Meswick, yes. would it be possible to get you off here as well? if? If we come back here all in one piece and get the children, will you be willing to come with us? He has a bit of solemn look on his face, and he looks at you with a serious look, and then he looks over at Nezel and Gesma. I just take the kids. Mm. Wouldn't want him to uproot his business. He seems pretty well situated. I, I say uh... whispering. I dig in my pack, and I know I still had a few loose uh, magicigs from the ones I gave Decker, and uh, I hand uh, whatever I have left, I guess, to him, and say, uh, I probably don't use when another friend did. Maybe you might be able to enjoy them. Oh, damn, it's been a hot minute since I've had these. Thank you. Frowned upon down here, but, hell, yeah. as long as we're in the safety of my old shop here. Look. You guys are able to work whatever you got business-wise down here. You can get those two young'uns off of this planet. You'll do enough good by me. We'll uh, we'll return for the children, of course. But if you need anything, 
after you've taken a look at my stock, let me know, too. Of course. I appreciate the tin gold, though. That's... Oh, shit. He says, kind of biting into one of the gold pieces <laughs> and staring at it. Information is very valuable. I'll give you a layout of most of what I know around here. He, uh, takes the hour that you guys are resting and scrawls out the area of the butcher shop close to the tavern of the spoiled drink he draws another area a little far off um, marked as the Scuzziatelli house he draws a circle somewhat close sort of towards the north end of the city the barons and then he kind of draws a few circles on the opposite side somewhat close to the barons and marks it Scuzziatelli factories ah okay there's a house and then there's the factories well um Glace we should get to the butchery first though maybe they found out something about your sister yes maybe they can tell us more about this place maybe look uh I don't want to lie to you guys, but, uh, I mean, old Benny, I'm not sure how much he's going to know about your sister. No offense. Oh, uh, don't worry. We have our ways. <laughs> and I wink at him for some reason. <laughs> I wink. <laughs> we all just wink at him. I tip my, I tip my hat. <laughs> he just looks at you all confused and then puts in a magic and lights it. We're using a tinder box. Sure. Right, I'll, I'll take the loose chains from Guzma and sort of just wrap them around my hands. You know, to the point where it looks like I'm bound, but I'm not really. Oh, th- thank you, Guzma says. As her head sort of sinks back, and you see a, a drool kind of running out of the side of her mouth. <laughs> she falls back asleep. And I, I take off the mask, I stow the mask, and I... I kind of assume like a more hunched like posture oh now are you going to be a talking kinku or a yes no kinku? yes no kinku. oh this this is horrible this is horrible i hate this but let's it's horrible i hate this <laughs> this will be interesting is that some horrible. type of magic that makes him talk uh, he's a um... magic, magic. Mm. <laughs> magic. <laughs> he, he like stares daggers at Glossy. Magic. He's a very magical bird. Yes. Nice. Magical bird. <laughs> you guys gonna do magic to make any more gold coins? Best bird. Uh, well, not yet. I'm sure one day. Holy shit. <laughs> There, right. There's got to be a way to make all of this right. If it's if it's not anytime soon, then we have to start working towards it. This place is just horrible. Horrible. Yes, it is. Hey, stop. Look, I, uh... <laughs> as I said, it's a nice dream there, Glossy, but, uh... This is just the fact of the world. This is what happens. A lot of people out there, they're scum. Well, the scum will fill my wrath one day. <laughs> this I is mean, one I'm situation sure. where you may have to do it from the, the outside in instead of the inside out. Yes. I do well, we'll do what we can while we're here. Mm-hmm. Well, uh. um, what, what, what was the first stop? Are we stopping at, um... Butchery. Butchery, yes, yes, butchery. Uh, thank you, Buswick. I'm gonna head back up front. Keep an eye out for things. If you guys wanna buy anything, let me know. I'm checking pockets when you come back from around the back. No offense. <laughs> That's exciting. Oh, a shoplifter. I've never been a shoplifter before. Maybe I should take something for fun. You better not. <laughs> You're just saying it in front of him. Oh, I won't. I wink at him. (laughs) 
I you're lucky you uh, protecting those kids. Ugh. <laughs> kind of shifts back through a, a really tattered curtain and pulls it shut. Uh, okay. <laughs> you guys can finish your long rest if there's anything from that poison potion herb menu that you guys want to buy. You're welcome to. Oh, it's a long rest. No, it's short a, rest. Oh, short, short rest. rest. Okay. Okay. He specifically said he's not going to house your guys' ass for the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I can I get a uh, greater restoration on Sun Kong over resting to cure his uh, exhaustion? Oh, sure. You place a hand on Sun Kong. There is a light that emits from your palm that you see pushing out from underneath as you place a hand on his shoulder. You see Jir for just a second almost radiate and shine a bit. Sun Kong, you're still hungry, but you have this fullness of energy inside of you where you felt just a, a slightly exhausted before. Oh, thank you. That, that helps a lot. Oh, I think we're getting better at doing this. <laughs> the hour passes by. You hear the clanking, the occasional shout from outside. The angered shout. But otherwise, it's relatively... The... Uh, Everything is, is quiet, at least in this sort of huddled room. You guys are all relatively huddled together. There's not a whole lot of room back here. It's almost like a glorified closet. But you're at least able to find a, a spot between a few inches of one another to rest a bit. And the hour passes by, and the ball's in your court. Uh, well, let's go away to the Well, bedroom. yeah, let's go. Let's go find out about your sister. Mm. Are you guys leaving? Nezel says, kind of waking up, scratching an eye. Yeah, you and Gesma are gonna stay here. Uh, we'll be back, but we've got a couple things we need to do. I could probably help. No. No, you should stay here. Too dangerous. You should stay here, Gesma says, kind of patting the floor where he has stood up. All right. Sometimes when we get down here, well, that trek down those tunnels is kind of scary, and it takes a little while, so I kind of like to rest down here sometimes. It's, it's pretty safe down here, at least as long as we hide out back here. And we make a little money and sometimes uh, food when we sell stuff to uh, Meswick. Listen, you two need to focus on staying out of sight and staying safe. We're going to come back for you. So, just make sure to stay out of trouble. Don't try to sell anything or be any heroes or go back home. Unless that's the safest thing at that time, but just hide out and stay low. Stay safe. Gizmo looks and says, Usually, sometimes we return home, but... I don't know. Something about those tunnels. It was yeah, real spooky go. this time, even though it was with all of us. <laughs> there, there's big bads in those tunnels. Um, yeah. Hide here. Yeah, I'd hate to run into one of those things that was alive, so... We're gonna yeah. do a little bit of business with Meswick, and then... <laughs> well, whenever you guys are done, make sure and come back for us, okay? Come back. Okay. Like he said. <laughs> Alright, let's head out. You guys pull the tattered curtain and head back out. Meswick looks at you and nods. He's just sort of wiping down his counter. It looks like there is nothing being cleaned as he does so. I, I rag put my... is... <laughs> He's using a dirty rag to do it. I put my hand up to my mouth like, ooh. Like I didn't take anything. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of quickly throws it down and leers at you with his protruded eye and then steps up. Pockets! Oh, 
Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Kind of sifts a hand quickly through oh, each of your guys' pockets. Oh, don't put your hand in that one. <laughs> hey, don't be gross, oh miss. God. Oh, looks like there's nothing in there. Yeah, there sure ain't. <laughs> Class A pickpocket. <laughs> Guess I'll yes, get away this time. He runs a hand through each of your pockets, occasionally pulling out a pouch that has some of your own guy's stuff, but he quickly hands it back to you, realizing that you haven't taken anything. All right. Uh, keep an eye out over the young'uns in the back. What do you guys expect it back? Oh, uh, that's... that's... uh... That's... Gonna come back once a day, or are we just gonna come back when we're done? I, I mean, it's really... Done. Yeah, we don't know when exactly we're going to be done. Yeah, we might be a couple days. Don't, you know... What about an ear, the earpiece? Should we give him an earpiece? Do we have an extra one? Well, we took one from Anoki. Oh, true. I yeah, that works. We will come back. Do you think it's worth giving him one? I mean... I we must come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, we, I guess we don't have to. We'll just be back when we're back. No back luck, when uh, we're back. All right. Do your thing, but uh, don't go thinking that you guys are the liberators of the whole city. I don't want you to come back to my little shop here with a 30 or so kinku behind you, as well as the tollers on your tails. Oh, we... N trouble doesn't follow us or anything. You're good, don't worry. Um... Has there ever tried, like, has anybody tried to start an uprising, a riot, a, a gathering of the slaves before? Uh, some of the slaves, as well as the occasional do-gooders come in here who didn't know the lay of the land and tried to cause, uh, trouble. Uh -huh. But once the Knights of Acid come around, well, that usually gets quelled pretty quickly. Gotcha. The They've streets. never seen the likes of us. Now, Sun Kong, when you say that, I, I don't think you heard what the man said. <laughs> Knights of acid. That's. They seem. They're elementals of that made of acid. We need to keep they that. Sneaking through the tunnels underneath the city, Sun Kong. They could be anywhere at any time. Who's so can I? Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well, it's your funeral. Just make sure one of you comes back for the kids. I heard bad right. things about the tunnels that they take. Don't like them. Yeah, me neither. Come back for uh, kids. Yes, absolutely. Good. Let's uh, let's get going, I guess, guys. All right. Well, talk to you later, hopefully. All right. Get the fuck out of here, you weird strangers. He says as you guys open the door to leave. <laughs> Bye. Oh, uh, Rinkaz, uh, don't don't be afraid to rough me up a little bit if you need to. <laughs> I poke him with my I, I poke him with my quarter staff. Him. Um. <laughs> it's okay. It, just so I get this right, and I don't say the wrong words when trying to save you or any other from your flock or family. Yeah, you guys are called a murder, correct? I mean, I don't want to say it murder and then, you know, I, I point to the pistol and make bad hand gestures. It looks like explosions and... Murder? Yes, no. <laughs> are a lot of you a murder? Yes, no. I'm just fucking with you, you know, I can still... <laughs> Wait, wait. Yes, we're we a, a group of us is referred to as a murder. <laughs> He's got a gun. <laughs> Rick so has just starts firing indiscriminately. <laughs> Sun Kong, you have to be careful in this place now. You. You saw all those things back there. Who knows what other creatures could be out here under what, whoever is in control's power. I, I don't want to have to tell Ukog that her husband's somewhere in an acid pit on this planet. Mm -hmm. Let's go outward. Let's outward go to the butcher. Butcher. Aesop 
with some of your heightened senses that you hear the occasional soft flatulence coming from Chunk. However, you do notice the difference that being close to him, the air is much clearer to breathe than outside of uh, the radius around him. Nice. <laughs> I Not so to close now, to is he? I mean, he's still pretty gross. <laughs> Asa walks away from John. <laughs> well, I have to be next to the person that knows how slaves are actually treated. So, where are you guys head to? To the butchery, or whatever it's called. Oh, I could, I could use a ham sandwich. <laughs> like Draw me on rye. I IRL right now, please. Seriously. <laughs> Hammy Sammy. Are you guys trying to be incognito? incognito? You know, just trying to blend in. Alright. Mm -hmm. It's not too far from here, a few blocks. But if you are trying to do your best to remain incognito, please roll me a group stealth. Hey, Vidi! I hope your head feels better. Uh, Aesop literally hides behind Rinkaz the entire time. 23. 23. 26. I fucking Vidi is just like, la 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 la. <laughs> oh, thank you for the, thank you for the extra D10. Mm. Give me 16. Oh, damn. Nice. Much better. Oh, I rolled low, boys. Hey, 10 is above average. I mean, 12 is above that's good. So we had three really good rolls and two not so good rolls. But Rink not terrible. Rinkaz is, is making a bit more noise as well as Glossy a little bit than most of you. However, he is sort of the slave owner and thus probably taking somewhat of a lead in the pack here as you guys make your way on. You get the occasional glance as you are passing by one of the intersection blocks. <laughs> of a toller turning your way just to watch and then turns back to focus on another group of folk. As you guys are walking through the streets in VD, a figure kind of bumps into your arm. Watch where you're walking! And it keeps shifting back down through the streets. Uh, yeah. I wish uh, Yolanda was here. Do you? I mean... She, she would have stabbed one of these guys already. <laughs> then it would be normal, and then less people would look at us. Maybe I should stab someone. No, no. I'm sure you'll do something crazy soon. <laughs> Me? Crazy? I wouldn't murder anybody. Uh-huh. Murder. You guys... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Having a map sort of drawn out via Meswick from the nice, solid, tingle pieces handed over to him... It makes you guys traversing your way here through the city of Scourge much easier. And after passing a handful of blocks, trying your best to keep your, your way out of the group of, of folk, some of which are sort of mingling in the sh shady alleyways, others who are kind of whispering in hushed groups, you see a human fall on all fours as a whip cracks across his back from another human. You hear chuckles coming from a crowd not too far away. Uh, you find yourselves sort of behind a group of buildings. And Aesop, as you sort of... I guess you're the one with the map, or who would have the map? I wouldn't have the map, but I have the key to the... Glossé. Peacekeepers. Have the okay. map, maybe? Sure. Gloss is you sort of just trying to subtly unfurl the hastily drawn map by Meswick can see, looking up, that one of the ratty back doors of this sort of row of back entrances is marked with a, a very dried, but once uh, formed in what looks like blood of what creature you're unsure, a heart kind of marked on the door. Okay. <clears throat> so this must be the butchery? Butchery, in. Let's go. Uh, I guess Aesop trots forward with uh, 
I guess I'll palm the key and see if there's any reaction anywhere. No reaction as you hold the key in hand. It, do I see the large bloody heart? Yes. So you walk up, it's this large wooden door and in dried blood, uh, some of it kind of dripped down from wear and tear. Uh, you see the bloody heart on, on the back of this door. There's a handle there. Before I open the handle, can I just like try to put my hand on the heart and see if it like goes through like it's part of the portal or something? Uh, you do see a lock on the door. Oh, okay. Um, I will say that. Okay. Uh, there's no it's reaction. A of, key. There's no well. There's no reaction of the key that you see from holding in your hand. Okay. So, although you guys are aware that in close proximity to these places that f- form a, a transit yeah, portal yeah. to them, that as long as you just had it on you, although you've never actually, I don't think. I don't remember if you guys have ever actually tried the key in the door before. I mean, I'm going to make sure no one's looking at us. And if I Uh, make a perception check. Okay. Oh, that's going to be a 22 with a natural 20. Oh, shit. Got that card. Very nice. You may take this card. Oh, gimme, 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 (laughs) gimme, gimme. This is this is one d eight after making a skill check or attack roll. Neat. Um, okay, I, I put the key in the lock. Oh wait, wait. Well, tell me what I see first. I guess you peer around. There is the occasional glance from a few passerbys, but with your twenty check, you remain inconspicuous enough so that you find the right time where you don't see any prying eyes to fit the key into the lock, if that's what you'd like right. to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to turn it and then open the door. You place the key into the lock and give it a turn. Hang on, let me see. Let me find uh, party belongings. Key to the Obsidian Hall. The key has a intricate looking f- design to the front and you're unsure if it will fit into the keyhole. There's a bit of a resistance at first, but as you push in just a bit more, it slides in. As you turn, it gives way and as it shifts from its horizontal, uh, vertical to horizontal nature as you kind of click it over, you hear the soft popping noise of the familiar sound of the door transitioning from wherever it would normally lead to opening a new way into the obsidian hall very nice <laughs> oh, I walk in uh, you yeah, open the door definitely. and see quite the transition to the muddied noxious air filled location that you guys are currently in to the pristine black and gold hallway of the obsidian hall in the distance you see Leah look up from her desk kind of just watching you Uh, you step in Aesop please make I believe it's a wisdom saving throw oh yeah this place has got the zone of truth zone of truth uh, that is going to be pretty darn good. A 20 on that saving throw. I'm going to walk in, too. Uh, I'll go with them. I'll go ne- also. All right, everyone following in line and step, please make me a... Actually, I'm sorry, uh, Aesop. That's a charisma saving throw. Uh, even worse so just like I always do when we come here I failed to check because I rolled a 2 literally no bonus it's charisma yes mine's a 14 fail like always Uh, I get a 13 with disadvantage I've never lied in my life. <laughs> what is yours, Glossy? 26. 
Glossy, you don't feel any sensation as you enter. However, everyone else feels a sensation as though if they were to utter something, they could not lie. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, not the first time for me. Yes, let's uh, let's continue on onward uh, then. Give me just a second here. As oh, you guys... I think he's safe also. He rolled nah. a twenty-eight. No, nah, I have disadvantage, man. Oh. I wish. Thank you, though. <laughs> give me just a second here to change some stuff around. With a plus nine. Holy shit. Is that what? That's not one of your disadvantage rolls, though, is it? Uh, 13 was a disadvantage roll. The first roll was a 20. Roll of 19. Okay. That you guys is. hear the clamber of your feet against the marble floor, and you can see that you're tracking drops of water and uh, grossness as you step in. I'd be so pissed at us if we just walked in our house like this. I'm sure she'll get somebody to clean it up. <laughs> this place probably magically cleans itself. Oh, that's true. I wouldn't be surprised. Aesop straightens up and, and puts his mask back on. I, I failed, right, with a 14? Yes, you the... did. We all did, okay. yeah. Other than Glossy. Oh, Glossen. good. <laughs> so the same as usual. Yes. You guys walk down the hall, hearing the clatter and echo of the steps around you as you step up to Leah's desk. Welcome back, she says, looking up. Hello, Leah. To be here, I guess. Did you find anything about Lustrea? Perhaps. Oh. We have to do the interview first. God. Yes, I had some paperwork to fill out that I'd like for each of you to take some time. However, I was given notice that Alderman would like to speak with you. Okay. He seemed nice. Mm -hmm. very, very I don't nice. remember who that is. <laughs> that, it's the old guy uh, that offered us wine that, that was from the 10th pit. He's that not a vampire. <laughs> he is the regional manager of the Twixt Plain for the 10th pit. Yes, yes, he was very professional. <laughs> you all know Aesop's not lying. <laughs> yeah, no, none of us is. Except last night, possibly. I'll never tell. <laughs> so I you, were, you like coyly acted like your pickpocket was so good. <laughs> I could see it with like her middle three fingers over her mouth being like hoo, 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 hoo. Well if you'll please take the lift. Let's go. I I go on the lift. Oh. <sighs> Me too. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance to return, I would love for you to sign this paperwork. She says. As why? She why would we not return? Don't yeah, we have I to don't... come back this way? Why would you I, say it like that? Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> why? Why would you say it like that? It's so weird. <laughs> can, can, can the the door fucking close like a subcon says that? <laughs> yeah, and I, I just look at I look back at everyone. I'm like, why would she say it like that? What does that mean? As Sun Kong keeps repeating this, the uh, lift attendant pulls open the gate, allowing you guys to the uh, sort of like uh, you know those those like gates that you pull open the iron gates that uh pull open so you can step into the lift and he kind of pulls it shut as sun kong keeps repeating this <laughs> the lift doors close and you feel oh. a shift as it begins to move i'm sure this is fine this place gives me anxiety <laughs> yes it's it's not that it's too You're much magic i don't like it you're all exaggerating. It's not the magic I'm worried about, it's the secrets. And the way things are phrased. That's all. Just think of it as a library. A Libraries big, are boring, though. A big, big evil library. 
library. Give me just a second. The lift continues to scrawl. Up or down, you're actually not sure. Did it take this long last time? Sun Kong, do you need to breathe? You need to relax. Why did he say it like that? It's, it, 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 it was a little disconcerting, okay, but I'm sure you're... it's fine. It's like, how other way would we come be... Why would we not go back? Sun Kong, you're making me panic. Just say it. Murder. I can't murder, lie, I'm Murder, sorry. murder. <laughs> <laughs> the lift comes to a stop. And the attendant pulls open the gate. Turning in his wheelchair, you see the tall, adorned in a grayish, light-colored suit. This figure with this mustache and beard and this top hat. Uh, turning the uh, handles of the wheelchair that Alderman sits in to face you guys. Alderman looks to you, his pale face and eyes lighting up just a bit as he sees you. Please, please, come in. It's been a while. I open my flask and toast it to him and say, Cheers, sir. It's good to see each of you. Although it looks as though you are one less from when you last visited. Hmm. We has had, it been uh, that long? I think it has, Maybe. yes. I believe she has retired. For the time being, at least. Well, uh, she's uh, taking it easy right now. Tired why or not. Not many chances for those to do that. Probably right? not. Right? Crazy. Either. Most of them usually just die. Okay. Okay, wait, what? Hmm. That is certainly true, Sanka. Oh, no. <laughs> what can we do for you today, <laughs> Mr. Alden? I wanted to speak with you. I believe, at least from the intel that I've gathered, that you are all currently on Scourge, is that correct? Unfortunately. Can I offer you a drink before we speak further? Oh yes, I'd love one. Sure, Thank why you. not? A, a water, please. It might be the last time I have any fresh water. We're on no Scourge way, this after might all. be the last time we get to drink alcohol. Let's, let's... Seriously. I want some Whatever. wine. Anything you have will make this day better. <laughs> Gosh, my <laughs> flask can say real f refill, please. Uh, Alderman turns. Gossamer spirits and water for each of them, please. The figure turns, leaving from behind the wheelchair and stepping over to what looks like sort of like a cocktail bar and begins to pour some drinks for each of you. You, you see, Sun Kong, they're the picture of courtesy. Everything's fine. Uh, keep them coming. <laughs> you guys take the wine glasses, as well as the, the sort of tankard that goes with it of water, and sip it down. The wine is exceptionally good. Mm -hmm. Lovely. <sighs> I assume oh, that you have some important business to have come to a place like that. Indeed, it seems my own flesh and blood is on the planet in more ways than one. What do you mean by that? Well, my daughter is somewhere on that planet and I aim to extricate her from this horrible situation that she's gotten herself into. Also, I am worried about the Scuziatelli family perhaps using some of my old research for nefarious ends. From what I've heard, you are particularly skilled at what you do, Azov. Well, not as much as I used to be, perhaps, but I still know how to brew a potion or two. Always helpful. I also heard that you are seeking a cure for your people. That's correct. A very altruistic ideal to have. 
Indeed. I wish you the best in your pursuits, he says as he holds up his glass of wine. Mm. <laughs> Motherfucker's trying to get my hopes up. Do you know there's slaves down there? Can't can't you do anything to help them? What kind of planet is that? How well I know it's a moon, but how how can people just <laughs> Let that happen. There has to be something done. All those innocent lives, all those slaves. I'm very aware of all of those things. More and than you probably would like to know, Waterman says. Oh. Surprise, surprise. Waterman looks over at the gentleman who has finished kind of handing out the drinks. I'm an older man now. Though I've lived for a long time, not all of my faculties are my own. If you would permit an old man one of his desires, I would like to take a small trip into Scourge. What? Really? Want to come with us? You know... It's a very awful place. We almost... Do you know that it's full of poison and slaves and people looking to set acid nights on, on you? You know this. And we found dead Umber Hulks. No. Like, I no, don't want to no. face an Umber Hulk. No. And I was dead. <laughs> no, honey, they were real. And you're the one that... Okay, listen, we'll talk about that later. I, you hit your head. You see him smile. Dang, it's horrible. Almost... In sort of a patient manner, just letting you guys <laughs> speak, and says, uh, It won't be for that long, just a small stroll through some of the streets. I mean, I suppose... I think you... that's going to get a little bit of attention, though. You, you do seem to be dressed a little bit fine, some of the streets. Yeah, you would draw attention. As you are currently. I have been alive for a long time. Okay, well, Trust old me man. when I tell you, I know what I'm doing. I, in that case, I see no reason to... I mean, you, if you say you can take care of yourself, then... Sure. Why not? I mean, you've been helpful. I think... We do need all the help we can get. Mm hmm I mean, and maybe, hey, they, they might not see him or something. Maybe there's some weird magic he has on him, right? You'll have magic on you where nobody sees you? No. <sighs> okay, well, you know, it, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you just need to take a stroll around? Yes, I would like that very much, Autumn it, says. There are pigeons that shit acid here. I hope you understand. You could die from a pigeon. <laughs> I'm Defecating aware of such this. things, Autumn says. As he says this, you guys watch as the attendant steps over and leans down to whisper in his ear secrets see that more secrets he Rose leans Bob. back up <laughs> i'm very aware gossamer it will be for a short time permit an old man to have a small bit of fun every once in a while oh, i yeah. say let him come he's not, he's made his decision sure yeah. i don't see why not i just it mm. He's a grown man, he knows what he's doing. I'm not worried about him, I'm worried about us. Uh. Or I said it. <laughs> You'll be fine as long as you're with me. I, that's good enough for me. What do you know about this place where we'll be fine with a pristine, cleanly shaven, wonderfully dressed older man? Who doesn't look a day over 50, by the way. How old are you, Glossy? Oh! A lady never... Oh, I can't believe you would ask me that! Wait, 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 wait. I know how this works. 
you give her something and she'll give you the answer, right? I'm gonna... <laughs> I just gonna laugh. Let's say it's gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> 21. <laughs> he smiles. Very young. And much <laughs> to learn. Oh. <laughs> Look, I don't know why you're all being so apprehensive. I try. I say let him come. Okay, we'll let you come. And, um... I mean, I don't... I, this is gonna ruin our plan, but sure. Let you come. We'll see what happens. I mean, it, if, it comes, go wrong? If, if it comes down to it, we'll say that he's the prospective buyer of m me. Oh, that's a good he's idea. He's the Leo DiCaprio. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I'll take your word for it. Okay. From Django. Is, is your... I don't know what that is, but I'll take your word. <laughs> Some kind just matter of factly. From Django, Unchained. Quentin Tarantino. You know, the Quentin you know. Tarantino movie. <laughs> he exists uh, in this universe. Does see... Quentin Tarantino exist in this universe? <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> you see Alderman wheel over and uh, put a hand on the panel behind his desk. There is a stained glass panel behind him uh, lit with a translucent uh, deep bluish light it shifts and you see now as it shifts out of the way pulling to the right behind it a beautifully crafted completely black door oh w well we, we can't leave just yet we promised we'd return to the front desk and uh, sign some papers i believe we had some interviews needed to do and we had some more information to gather yes as i mentioned this will be a short stroll and you're welcome to fill these things out upon your return oh oh we're coming back here oh, oh, all right i guess that's what she meant you'll have okay. to bring I me hope. back of course oh, you're not yes, just going to leave me in score jari we, we wouldn't leave anyone oh <laughs> not Place. Uh, oh, well, of course. A quick jaunt. Let, let's go, everyone. This should be uh, fun. Let's go. I don't like this. What could go wrong? Oh, Sun Kong. You're a bad monkey, you know that. You're well, bad. If one of you would be so kind, he says, looking back at you guys. I'll push him. Now you be gentle. He's an old man. Oh no! I, I'll be I, I, I take the chains and wrap them around my hands again and get in my hunched posture. All right, all right. You take your mask off. Oh, I, I never put it back on. Oh, I thought you did. You do these things, Sun Kong. You kind of step behind the wheelchair, getting ready to push it forward. As you guys step up to the door. Alderman himself kind of grabs the crystal-looking translucent handle and turns it. There's a soft pop that comes from the door, and as he opens it, you see the entrance leading out to the street that looked like where you first entered f into the butcher's uh, back door. And you guys step out back into Scourge. Yes, Smithers. Take me to the common folk for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So. Get a good old inhale of this wonderful poisonous air. I'm sure it'll be. <coughs> Wait! <coughs> Don't actually <coughs> do that! <laughs> Horrible poisonous air. Murder. Murder. <laughs> Alderman turns, waiting for the last of you to step through and to shut the door. Alright, where you want to go? Lead the way. Just a quick stroll, a couple blocks down, and we'll turn back and circle back this way. I'll point the way, Sun Kong, if you would please be so kind as to lead me forward. Oh, I so push. <laughs> yeah, I, I push wherever he, he, he wants. I want to observe 
the people he looks at, if, if, he, if I see him looking at anything in particular, and if people look at him in any kind of way. <clears throat> Make a perception check as the group begins pushing him through the streets. Ooh, glacé. That's a six. There is more than the occasional turning of heads, seeing a elderly gentleman being pushed in a oh, wheelchair, dressed no. in fine clothing, pushed through the streets. Oh, by a monkey. Idea. This was a bad, bad idea. We are blowing our cover because this man wants to just take a stroll and scourge. However, you're not able to really perceive anything they're saying. They're looking at us. I know they're looking at us. Take a ride here, Sun Kong. Alderman says. Right turn! You continue pushing him through the streets. Are you guys doing your best to try to remain incognito? I'm still... Fucking... Yeah. I'm still maintaining my slave-like demeanor, I guess. Everyone give I'm... me a group stealth check at disadvantage. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm... I'm not doing it. I, I re I'm... I just don't see the point in, as Glossé. Glossé is just strolling along with Alderman. Strutting her That's shit. what I'm doing too. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Justin, wait, wait, hold Can on. I... This is my good luck card. What is my good luck card? It's plus 1d8, but it's a critical fail because I have it at disadvantage. That is a crit fail. Take oh. one of these, buddy. <laughs> okay. Second of the night. I don't Too like bad. this deck, Jason. This deck um, sucks. Can it's I? Not... I want to try to look important. I I want to try to be seen and look important because I feel like this is like a white elephant, like in the fucking room. Uh, everybody knows we're here. Uh, okay, make a uh, performance yeah. check. And Aesop, what's that bad luck card say? It is minus one d eight after a saving throw. Okay. So. I have plus 1d8 after a skill or attack <laughs> roll, and minus 1d8 after a saving throw. Twenty-four. Oh, Classe, you strut your stuff and look like an individual that has some import. Just taking Grandpa out for a stroll, everyone. Mind your own business. Yep. You ever seen a boy and his grandpa? <laughs> Monkey boy and his grandpa. With your collective checks, it doesn't take long with another turn down another street. As you see, standing at the street corner, one of the tollers begins we're to dead. stroll up from a distance. Oh, we're so dead. <laughs> Let's keep dead. on walking. If you'll stop here, Sun Kong. Oh, I stop. This is This is how we die. Alderman simply places a palm on his uh, dragon-headed, um, what looks to be just sort of like walking cane, uh, putting another palm on the other, and stares intently as at the toller as the toller approaches. You can hear the sound of breathing within the helm. <gasps> it shifts its head and turns back, keeping most of its attention on Alderman. You watch as the toller shifts down, taking a knee. Uh, I'm gagging, what? Continue, Sung Kong, Alderman says. The toller you, uh... steps back up and shifts a few steps back out of your way. Can I continue? Uh, Alderman? Yes? What was that? Did you just do some kind of mind trick on him? No mind magic, Glossé. The Tenth Pit have a certain amount of importance in places like this. Are you... do you have family here, maybe? Wink. <laughs> so to speak. You see him... smile just a bit. Ever so slightly. Turn left here, Sun Kong. We're almost there. 
I cannot believe this. There seems to be a number of somewhat shoddy made looking residential houses and homes around here. Their makeup makes you believe that they're probably not slave homes in any way. They're certainly not shacks or dens. They're, at least for a place like Scourge, relatively well kept. Here, Sun Kong, Alderman holds up a hand. If you would just bring me up to the window, please. There's no need to knock on the door or anything like that. I do it. You wheel him up to the window, and with him, peer inside. Uh, Sun Kong, make a perception check. <laughs> it's a bunch Dude, of lions. I'm doing great, y'all. Just great tonight. Um, it, it's kind of dark in there. I'll say you have advantage though because of your your third eye so I'll let you roll one more time alright unnatural 20 you peer in and see what looks to be a female figure stepping out of a rather large sort of living room looking area the insides are dark kind of ambiently lit uh, uh, lit by a number of lanterns and candles there is a young looking frail woman doesn't seem all that old sitting in what looks like a a wheelchair of some make on her face is some device attached to some type of a helm uh, perhaps some type of covering over her mouth and nose like a breathing apparatus. Uh, you watch as Alderman just stares through the window. Do you know these people? I don't recognize any of the others, but this one, the child, If you would permit me to share a secret with all of you. Juicy secret. <laughs> sure. Secret. I believe this from what I've been able to gather. Well, let me start from the beginning. I won't go into too many details, but suffice it to say becoming a member of the Tenth Pit requires you shedding your past in one or more ways. Most are required to have their past wiped from their minds. I went through this process. However, there's a nagging feeling, a sensation in my mind. A number of years of my life that I felt lived somewhere else, a family on my own. These memories didn't start percolating until the time I received word of you all. Oh. I gathered what I could, trying to keep things relatively low-key from the rest of the Tenth Pit. I have it on authority to believe that the young child in there is Perhaps my granddaughter or great-granddaughter. Perhaps great-great-granddaughter. I don't know. You are pretty old. <laughs> Have you ever spoken with her? Oh, no, no. That would, of course, endanger my position, but also the child's. I would never do such a thing. So, when you get rid of your past, you also strip your family name? Yes. You must forget everything to join the Tenth Pit. No previous attachments, of course. But somehow, over the past few years, these thoughts of another place have been percolating in my subconscious. I dream of a different area. Not 
too dissimilar from Scourge, although somewhat cleaner. Is it as cruel? I don't believe so. At least, not what I've dreamt. Let me ask you, Alderman turns, Aesop, your daughter is missing. Yes? Do you have any whereabouts of where she may be? No. Not yet. Make a... Persuasion check at advantage, Aesop. Uh, that's gonna be a 14! <laughs> good luck, Art. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's a good idea! That's a really <laughs> good idea! We're gonna, we're gonna use that good luck card, boy! Very large good luck card. Nice. Oh, wow. That's going to be a 20. Wow. Wow. Thank you for the reminder on that. That was a good reminder, and that was a great matching of a very difficult DC. Clutch. Oh, shit. So, yeah, Aesop basically, like, breaks his Kinku character and looks very sad. That he is... You see Alderman yeah. study you a bit. There's a familiarity, a similar sadness almost in his eyes. He reaches underneath his firmly, uh, nicely pressed suit and pulls out what looks to be just a handheld uh, rectangular piece of leather. He hands it towards you, Aesop. This will get you almost anywhere you need to go, although I don't think you should hold it, Aesop. Oh. Right. And notice as he hands it to you, three burned droplet marks on it. <gasps> and you cannot say that I gave it to you either. Of course. Don't say you gave us what? I take uh, the envelope from him and say, "Now, peasant, hand it over." Ye yes, master. And I, I'll hand the leather to Rinkaz. It won't suffice for any type of alibi, but it should at least buy you some security making your way through the streets, at least. If you decide to involve yourself with the Scuziatellis, that may require a bit more convincing. Though I'm sure you are an adept group able to do it. I see. Thank Ottoman. you so much. He nods and turns back looking through the window. Sun Kong, you see a tall, slender female, human, come up and lean down. You see that she has a syringe in hand and turns the child's uh, wrist over and inserts a syringe into her wrist. Not her wrist, but kind of like forearm. Okay. She kind of, she, she with two fingers sort of grabs a piece of hair and runs her fingers down and then kind of gives her a looks to be kind of loving grip of the shoulder and steps up and walks behind the wheelchair that the young child is in and wheels her out of the room. Alderman turns looking back at you, Sun Kong. Thank you for permitting me this moment. Well... If everyone is ready, you can return me. Jason. Hello? 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 Jason? Oh, did you guys not hear me? Nope. Yeah, you broke up. Oh, sorry. Austin. Where did I cut out? After if the syringe part. Me, you can... Oh, 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 yeah. Alderman was about to say something. Alderman just turns to you, Sun Kong, and says, uh, uh, Thank you, Sun Kong. If you would... Please return me now. Uh, you're welcome. Let's go back. Start wheeling them back. So, Man. if they want, 
run into those tollers, they're not going to be as nice to us as they were you, are they? More than likely not, but provided you have that ID on hand, just flip open the leather cover and show them the markings inside. That should get you across the streets. Again, though, trying to embed yourself with the families may be a different affair. He points back, leading you the opposite way, Sun Kong, as you kind of, in reverse, travel, traverse back, heading towards the back door of the, uh, of the uh, butchers. He kind of, you wheel him up, and he said, turns back to you all and says, uh, well, you're welcome to come in and fill out your paperwork. But I understand that if you feel that you have more important things to do, he says, looking at Aesop, mm. uh, the paperwork is not required that you do it now, of course. Uh, Aesop looks to Glossé and says, family important. Family comes well, Yeah, first. we needed more yeah. information with you guys, like to speak with you guys about anyway, so we're going to come back at least for a little bit. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Very well. It seems that the two of you have your own family matters. You're welcome to come back through with me. Otherwise, I can let myself back in, Sun Kong. He reaches into a pocket on his suit and pulls out a similar key as as you have, Aesop. I have my own keys. Well, no, come with you. Oh, yeah. We we want to get this out of the way so we know where Glossy's sister might be. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go with you. So. Okay. To so make sure she's awesome. not here. Uh, actually, yeah, that's a good idea. You're ready to fill out the paperwork, then? No. Yeah, and talk to you guys. Wait, we have to do that first? Yes, I believe that was part of it, right? Yeah, that was the deal. Entails the details of the interview that we shall give you. Well, since we... I mean, can't we... Can't we just do the good old switcheroony on that one? I mean... What do you mean? Can't we just get the information first and do the paperwork later? You know we're good for it. We brought you this <laughs> I wouldn't see an issue with it. But... Of course... We have rules in place for a reason. Oh. Mm-hmm. Anyways, you've done me all a nice favor here. You have made me think about some things. Say, is your granddaughter, or great-great-great-granddaughter, or whoever, is she safe there? I hope so. It's our understanding. It's a very hard place to grow up. Alderman thinks. Perhaps I'll have a future job for you. Once you get your work done here. Mm hmm. Mm. Well, let's let's get our interviews out of the way as soon as possible. We yeah, let's have, go. Let's go do it. We also have Hush to save. There is a bit of a somber smile on Alderman's face. Yes, yes. The interview. Come with me, he says. Sun Kong, if you wouldn't mind pushing me through up the stairs. I do. You guys... help Alderman up back through the back entrance and find yourself back in Alderman's office. Closing the door behind you, you find yourself back in the nice, clean area of Alderman's personal suite. He wheels back over to his desk. You notice that the gentleman that stands to the side, that he's referred to as Gossamer, uh, gives him a long, hard stare. Well, thank you very kindly. That was a... 
a nice stroll. Yes, uh, it, it it very was. It very much was a a productive uh, outing. And thank you for filling me in on the goings on of your current activities. Of course. If you'll see yourself back to the lift, I will summon the operator to bring you back down to your Leah. Yes. You remember what floor it was? Oh god, do we? The first we... one? Yeah, back down to the... <laughs> What's the name? Were there numbers on the elevator, Jason? There weren't. <laughs> oh god. Uh, Gossamer steps over and whispers in Alderman's ear. Oh yes, yeah. that's not the first, he says with a smile. Oh. Okay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Gossamer knows. Very well. Well, did any of you want any drinks or anything else before departing? Should probably sh stay sharp for the next bit ahead of us. Yes. The interview will be short and sweet. Hmm. Wonderful. And then, I'm sure with the various arms of the Tenth Pit Glossé, despite what you may think of some of our dealings and activities, it also allows us access to an abundance of information that various other factions may not be privy to. Information is always wonderful to have, especially over other factions. But, if you guys do anything with this slavery stuff, I can't support you. Well... I can't. What if it meant saving your sister? My sister's strong enough, and she would be very angry with me if I ever supported somebody. <laughs> that would do such a thing in order to save her. I, I think... I don't know. I don't know. What if you made a deal with an old man willing uh -huh. to offer you some information regarding your sister for a small portion of interview to help not only us learn more about you all, but to perhaps learn more about this twilight you've asked about? I mean, that doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> Then perhaps best to think of it that way. I s still think you guys shouldn't be. Whatever. <laughs> there are many things that I wish as well. I'm sure. Well then. I believe the lift has arrived, he says, kind of pointing. You guys hear the clacking of the metal greeting opening. The attendant will see you back down. Thank you for spending a bit of time with me. Um, you're welcome. It was very pleasant. I should hope the next time we speak, it'll be under such... Nice circumstances. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. Nor do I, Alderman says. Mm. I hate the way they talk. I cross my I cross my arms and narrow my eyes at him. Talk. Goodbye, Glossé. <laughs> <laughs> it's not see you later, it's goodbye. <laughs> As, as soon as the, the gate shuts to the elevator, I'm like, wait, 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 did he say our Leia? As in there's more than one? Shouldn't the information that we were talking to Leia pinpointed what floor it was already? Leia is liaison. So there's probably like a, a whole bunch of her. But what if they're like all clones of one another? I mean, uh, I wouldn't I be surprised. This I hate it's this process. They think they know everything, all these secrets. They don't know everything. I kind of don't want to give them any information, but I do want to find my sister. 
No, we'll work with them, but uh, I hate this place. And it, they definitely have a hand in Scourge. I, uh, yeah. I agree. I Obviously. Hate uh, you see the lift attendant trying not to pay attention to your guys' conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Close proximity of you all. <laughs> we don't even care that he's there. <laughs> there you are. He says, opening the grating for you. Letting you step out. You guys step back into the Obsidian Hall and see Leah uh, writing a few things on a uh, few pieces of scroll-like parchment. You return. Yep. Told ya. We would like to conduct the interviews as soon as possible so we can get back to the business at hand. Oh, very well. Well, this will be a short process. I believe the paperwork will be longer than the interview itself, depending on how long it takes. A few forms here, just making sure to go over everything. You will see that, of course, no harm will come to any of you or anything like that. There are... Well, why, why would that even be an option? Why would she say that? Just, just let it go, Sun Kong. Let it go. You have, some of you, more than others, an acute distrust of us. We're very aware of that. <laughs> well, I mean, you talk real... suspicious. Wild nuts don't live as long as they do not being a little bit paranoid, after all. A little bit. Well then, Sun Kong, if you would take some time to read through the paperwork, you'll see that there is nothing up our sleeves. I mean, yeah, I guess you can say that. The paperwork can say that, but, you know... Aesop's already reading it and filling it out. Yeah, I'm not gonna not fill it out, but... I'm just saying. I usually have a manager to do this stuff. We need that one fucking uh, help us hand chick. That Billy Goat guy. Yeah, that guy. He, he was all right. Did, Leah turns I... and says, uh, uh, you're welcome to return if you would like to get a representative. Aesop, oh, be that's... my representative. What does this say? How, how uh, Jason, how, how long is it, does it look like it's going to take to sift through this? It looks to be about 20 pages. Ugh. Each packet as you flip through, it looks like it's going through a number of things as you kind of briefly skim over the top of it. No harm will come to you as an individual. It's just a few questions at most. Uh, a lot of just jargon speak in terms of keeping the interactions you have with the tent pit relatively low key and trying not to express what happens here with others as they are trying to kind of maintain an air of secrecy as you have come to know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally mentioning pieces of what they hope to gather from you, mostly what Alderman said as you kind of skim through, and uh, towards the last few pages mentioning the contract of uh, finalizing the interview and just trying to be as honest as possible uh, will lead to uh, benefits, uh, including but not uh, exclusive to information regarding Glossy's sister. I, I, Aesop's already signed everything like come on come on come on we have to get back as soon as we can I would like to do an arcana check on these papers okay Aesop's already signed them <laughs> <laughs> okay uh oh well, I yeah seven you run your hand over them trying to assess if there's any sense of uh, sort of magical scrying or any type of R written into them anywhere and don't necessarily sense anything or you're not sure if you do. Alright, Sun Kong signs his... Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. It's just an X with a line. Sure, whatever, I'll sign mine as well. You don't need to sign it in blood, Mia says, looking over. Why would that even be an option? <laughs> well, because Some... blood is a very good marker. You could use it as ink if you wished. I mean, but why? And blood is tied to the soul. Some deals are made with souls. 
Yeah, I guess it's good that it's not. I don't know if I'd be cool with that. I'm not requiring it for this interaction. We could use for this one. blood. Why are we talking about blood? L let's get on with it, shall we? I want to sign my name, but instead of Glossé, <laughs> I want to put an I where the L goes. <laughs> but kind of make it look like I don't know, like not my signature, but like kind of like a little off, you know, like that. Make a sleight of hand check. So does that say like Giasse? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey. This is. I'm gonna. Yes. This is where I use like. Giasse. Gucci alert. Giasse. Um. I want to use my inspiration card. Nice. Okay. I can't get rid of it. Oh god. <laughs> I'll just, just do this. Just throw it up on the screen if you want to. I'm trying. Okay. So get off. Okay. I got a sleight of hand, we see. Sleight of hand. 19. Nice! You sign it, Gyase. <laughs> it's a me, Gyase! <laughs> <laughs> and Vidi, what about you? Oh, I've always been a good test taker, so paperwork's <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like so proud of himself for remembering his name. Didn't you flunk? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I still <laughs> take tests really well. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll sign to help my friends. All right. She collects the packets, looking over each one. You see her pick up some spectacles and place them over her. <laughs> she looks up at you, Glossé. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the craftiness, but I've been trained in reading documents such as this. Oh, oh shit! Glossé, what are you? What are you doing? We don't have time to play around. Ugh. You're more than welcome not what... to sign if you don't wish to. Well, I do want to know where my sister is, and for some reason you lot seem to know everything. There's just a small discrepancy here. I want to make sure that I have your complete signature, she says, pushing it back your way. It looks like you signed Giasse. Don't look at it! This is my <laughs> confidential paperwork! You stay out of it! I would hate for you to follow through the interview process and not be able to receive the information you're looking for because of a misplaced letter. Of course. I just take it and, like, go over the eye with a straight line like an L. She pulls the packets back. Very well. You're not going to use this to blackmail us, are you? As it was I a very simple form, Glossé. Yes, no. Page 12, Section C, mentions mm -hmm. no blackmailing to use individuals, as well as no not... harm on page 6, Section A. Uh-huh, and what about our souls? They're still our souls, we're not signing our souls. Glossé, Glossé, come oh. on now! We we have to, we, we need to do this so we can get back to the matter at hand. Elegantly, uh, yes, no! Why? She's she, not a kinker. She, she looks up for just a second. <laughs> Page 16, Glossy, Section B. No, we do not have ownership of your souls. Fine, whatever. Very well. We can begin the interview process, she says. Yes, yes, quickly now. Closing, uh, dropping her quill uh, into the ink bottle and with that that is where we will end this session <laughs> oh yeah Oof. I didn't time. feel like it wasn't four hours it was three oh, hours yeah. three hours but you guys though. still got a lot done yeah 
I do. Thank, thank you for reminding me about that card in VD. We got the secret pass because of it. Wait, that why was... did he have a secret pass? See, because, like, the Tenth Pit owns that part of that whole... They, they have something Obviously. to do with Scourge. Scourge. They're, they're all in that. They're way deep in that. Here, Jason, you could take this garbage back. Oh, yeah, mine too. Thank yeah, you. Jason. Yeah, throw me your luck cards, guys. Also, Luke, I will need to send you a message sometime this week. Uh-oh. About next session. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. I'll take those. More Thank secret. you. More juicy secrets. It's like, how would you like your character to die next session? Let's talk about character death. I also... <laughs> Obliterated Glossy from this existence. <laughs> oh, oh. Murder. So now that you, no Glossy. Only Giasse remains. <laughs> Only Giasse. Glossy's <laughs> secret sister, Giasse. There is no Glossy. There is only Giasse now. <laughs> Giasse, <laughs> Ayer. She um, so, uh, was her sister all along. So what's the over-under on... Alderman being on sigil when you fuckers all destroyed it. Uh, pretty high. Yeah, probably there. Yeah, I'd say we'd be the favorites for that. Mm. What are the odds of us being here when we blow it up again? <laughs> Only one way to find out: use time sight wand on Alderman. Wait, I'm sure. I mean, we blew up sigil. There's no way we can unblow it up and blow it up again, right? Mm. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Just don't roll a four. one when you <laughs> do the time sight one. Or yeah. else you'll oh, all be God. blithering idiots. <laughs> See, uh, all the suspicious stuff is happening and it's distracting us from the real threat. The fact that this fucking dragon god over here is slowly absorbing souls and is going to kill us all. Kill us all. He's a true he's, end boss is Jira. He's a a growing boy. Jason, if you make Jira the end boss, I will never play another game with you as long <laughs> as I live. <laughs> he's too precious. <laughs> I can't hurt him. Oh shit. Oh, and that's the whole thing. <laughs> Jason he's gonna be a Tarask. He's a little baby Tarask. Holy shit. Rewrite some things. <laughs> <laughs> My god. All right, thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Let's see if we get any non-robots in our stream. Thank you, Active Energy. That sounds like a legitimate name. Um, another T T viewer viewer. Thank you. TV viewer. TV viewer. There Thanks. we go. Yeah. Uh, Banana Ninin. Commander Root. That's a robot. Thanks anyway. AI. Electrical <laughs> Longboard. Polize. Ted. <laughs> Ted. As well as you guys. Uh, join us next Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time for our next session. We move to Fridays. Follow the Twitter on uh, just below our Twitch page at GAWD underscore mode to see the updates and when the new uh, sessions come up. As well as if I try to stream anything else, I'll throw it up on there um, if I can. Uh, as you guys are watching our stream, you build up points. Loyalty points, and you can use those buy cool stuff like weird bit packages for the group that they can use to upgrade their ship or turn into cash. Or you can buy them inspiration, you can buy me inspiration. If you got enough points, you can name an NPC in the game, that's pretty cool. A uh, whole bunch of uh, cool shit. So uh, check that out on our page. Uh, if you miss any of the episodes, we keep them all on our Twitch page or our YouTube page that's uh, god underscore mode with a AW. Or you can just search Weird and Wild. That should pull up our sessions as well. I um, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>